As an experienced sailor and the first man to ever sail non-stop on his own around North and South America, Matt Rutherford has seen a lot during his voyages. But what he saw in 2013 while sailing through the waters of the Atlantic with his colleague surely stands out. Some 800 miles off the coast of Bermuda, not far away from the famous Bermuda Triangle, they noticed a boat that seemed to be moving by itself. The sails weren't up and the motor wasn't running. The sailors decided to check if there was someone who needed their help aboard, so they moved closer to the mysterious ship. Once they got there, things only got weirder as they realized there wasn't a living soul aboard. Rutherford started filming to document their discovery. The boat looked so awfully abandoned that they expected to find some pretty scary things in there. But it didn't stop Rutherford from searching the vessel. The boat, which turned out to be named Wolfhound, looked like an upscale one, probably costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was pretty weird to find it floating by itself in the middle of the ocean. It seemed like whoever abandoned it was leaving in a rush. There were clothes and other personal belongings all over the main cabin. Some parts of the ceiling had fallen and some drawers had popped open. The brave sailors decided to tow the ghost ship back to Bermuda. It wasn't easy because Wolfhound was bigger and heavier than their boat. After days at sea, the crew was running low on fuel and asked a passing freighter to stop and give them some gas. They kept pulling Wolfhound until the tow line got wrapped around the rudder and they realized they could get stranded in the Bermuda Triangle. So they had to abandon the ship. What really happened and how Wolfhound ended up in the middle of the ocean will probably remain a mystery. Rumor has it that it belonged to a member of the Royal Irish Yacht Club. The ship was going on its first voyage from Connecticut to Bermuda and then Antigua. It got in a terrible storm around 400 miles away from Delaware. The winds were so strong that the yacht suffered two knockdowns. A Greek cargo ship rescued the crew. They left the ship with an emergency beacon on. The rescued crew members shared that they saw the ship sink, which only adds more questions to the story. How did it get back to the surface? Does the Bermuda Triangle have anything to do with that? Christopher Columbus himself reported some unusual compass activity going on in this mysterious area while he was on his way to the New World. Despite the stories of more than 50 ships and 20 planes disappearing in the area, it remains one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. It could make sense because the busier the area, the more accidents happen there. But then again, it's not the number of disappearances that makes the place so mysterious. It's the lack of explanation and wreckage lost for good. The first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle was the USS Pickering. In 1800, it departed from the US on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew. No one ever heard anything from them ever since. The popular explanation is that the ship was taken out by a storm. But because no one found any wreckage, we'll never know for sure. The largest ship that has ever disappeared in this mysterious area was the USS Cyclops. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and vanished into thin air, or rather, water. The Cyclops never sent any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation or trace. The Bermuda Triangle isn't the only place in the world where ships go missing or mysteriously resurface. One of the most famous ghost ship stories would be of SS Bechimo. The large cargo steamer was built in Sweden. 
On October 1, 1931, it got caught in pack ice. The crew decided to wait it out and managed to break free after a couple of days, only to get trapped again in less than a week. This time, they didn't manage to make it out. A rescue team went by air to save 22 of the crew members. 15 other members stayed in a wooden shelter they built not far away from the ship. Their plan was to wait out the winter and get back aboard. At the end of November, a strong blizzard was rushing through the area. When it was over, Bechimo seemed to have gone away with the storm. The captain decided it must have broken and sunk. But a few days later, a local hunter informed them that he had seen the ship around 45 miles away from their camp. The crew managed to find the ship and took the most valuable cargo from its hold. They had fears that Bechimo wouldn't live through that rough water, but it did manage to survive after all. Once the ice was gone, it floated away and ended up drifting along the shores of Canada and Alaska. Many people reported seeing the ghost ship in an open sea. Some even tried to board it to save the ship, but the weather didn't allow it to happen. The last time someone saw SS Bechimo was in 1969. 38 years after its crew had left it. It could still be drifting somewhere in the ocean. The story of MV Hoyita happened in the South Pacific. The ship was originally a wooden luxury yacht. After serving for 20 years to various owners, it became a merchant ship. In 1959, it set on a trading voyage that was supposed to last around two days. When it didn't reach its destination on time, no one was worried at first as things happen in the open waters. After another day and no distress signals from the Hoyita, it was obvious that something serious was going on with it. There were 25 people aboard and their families wanted to find them. A search and rescue crew worked for six days looking for the ship or at least its wreckage in an area of nearly 100,000 square miles. That's one and a half times as big as Florida. Sadly, the mission had come back with no results. It seemed like Hoyita had disappeared without a trace. A month later, another merchant ship noticed Hoyita driving in the ocean, miles and miles away from its original route, and none of the crew members or passengers were on board. The cargo had also disappeared. The lifeboats were also gone, so the people must have escaped the ship hoping to save themselves. It turned out that the crew had been trying to get help as they tuned the radio to the International Distress Channel. But the damaged cable didn't let them send the signal any further than two miles. It also looked like when they were leaving the ship, the crew took the logbook with them, and we still don't know what exactly happened to Hoyita. Family members of those who were on board are still looking for answers. One professor claims it must have been a corroded pipe that leaked and flooded the vessel. But we'll most likely never know for sure. In the Pacific Ocean, near Japan, there is an area nicknamed the Devil's Sea. It's believed to be one of the 12 vile vortices around the Earth. Some people claim that vile vortices have weird things going on in them because the pull of the planet's electromagnetic waves is stronger there than anywhere else. The most famous ship that disappeared in the area was a fishery patrol vessel in 1952. The ship went there to investigate the vessels that went missing previously and disappeared along with 31 crew members. Scientists who don't believe it was a mysterious disappearance blame the underwater volcano eruption for what happened. It was the wealthiest and most beautiful city ever to be seen. Stepping through its central gate alone would take your breath away with its elaborate decorations and towering marble statues. Everywhere you'd look, you'd find yet another marvel of civil engineering and cultural prowess. Yes, the lost city of Atlantis was truly the pinnacle of ancient civilization. That is, if it ever existed. 
Since it was supposedly swallowed by the sea in its entirety, it's no wonder some curious minds linked it to the Bermuda Triangle, another subject of endless mystery in popular culture, suspected of swallowing quite a few missing planes and ships. In the late 1960s, it's said that a group of treasure hunters stumbled upon the remains of an ancient city while diving in the Bermuda Triangle off the coast of Miami. Not only did they claim to encounter some intricate looking ruins, but they also claimed that they found a glass pyramid there, larger than any other pyramid ever discovered in Egypt. A huge glass pyramid on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? No, that story turned out to be a hoax. Nevertheless, we do know that strange phenomena are still happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like volatile water currents or even the occasional vortex. When anyone mentions the Bermuda Islands, this mythical triangle is often the first thing that comes to mind due to all the mysterious disappearances or unexplained malfunctions. But there's a lot more to this territory than one mysterious triangle. Let me tell you about it, just in case you might want to visit. For a time after its discovery, Bermuda was briefly known as the Somers Isle, named after George Somers, a British privateer and naval hero. But the name that eventually stuck was the initial name, Bermuda, named after Juan de Bermudez, an explorer from Spain who discovered it in 1505. It's the oldest remaining British territory overseas, going back to a time before even the United Kingdom was established. The island's geographical creation is also unique. Scientists have recently discovered that the volcano that had generated this piece of land is like no other on Earth. Since it has pleasant weather almost all year, it's a great place for golfing, sporting eight world-class courses, often frequented by famous golf players or celebrities. You might just run into one by accident, if you're lucky. If you're more of a music fan, you would be interested to know that John Lennon got the inspiration for about 25 of his songs right here on this island, including classics such as Watching the Wheels, Woman, and Just Like Starting Over. Bermuda's official online travel guide even provides a Lennon-inspired itinerary, taking you from the Bermuda Botanical Gardens to the Masterworks Museum of Bermuda Art to Front Street, a district well-known for its very active nightlife. William Shakespeare himself has an interesting connection with this island. His famous play, The Tempest, a story about a shipwrecked crew that end up on a magical island where they are tormented by an old man and his servants, was initially going to be set in the Mediterranean. But after learning about a real-life shipwreck in Bermuda, Shakespeare was supposedly inspired, and so moved the setting here. The island is also home to some fascinating animal wildlife. On hot summer nights, a special insect that glows in the dark, called the Bermuda fireworm, can be found in protected bay areas. There's also a unique species of birds here, the cowhouse also known as Bermuda petrels. Believed to be extinct for about 300 years, they were rediscovered back in the 1950s, and a sanctuary was built for their protection. Currently, there are about 300 of these birds in Bermuda, total. Some of the first sailors to end up on the island at times reported strange sounds coming from inland and the surrounding waters after sunset. They even described what they heard as children screaming, so, of course, they thought it must have been because of witches or sea monsters. It took a little more time and research to figure out the sounds were coming from the cowhounds. These birds emit a very specific sound that can be easily confused with distressed human noises. Just as the Netherlands are famous for their tulips and Brazil for its coffee, Bermuda is well known for, drumroll please, onions. Yes, Bermuda used to export an amazing amount of onions back in the day, and the general quality of the vegetables produced here is said to be very high. Bermudians, that's how people living in Bermuda are called, are so proud of their onion heritage that when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's, a giant-sized onion decorated with beautiful lights is dropped in St. George's Town Square to usher in a new year. This is a big part of Bermudian tradition as their onion heritage is a point of pride for the Bermudian people. The community of Bermuda is known to be tight-knit and to be very friendly and sociable. It's common to say hi to everyone on the street, even if you aren't properly introduced. Not greeting people when entering a shop or jumping into a bus is actually considered rude, so be sure to get accustomed to locals saying hello when paying a visit. Another fascinating aspect of Bermuda is its architecture. 
The houses are all painted in bright, zesty colors. Bermudians take very good care of their homes, even repainting them every four to five years. And they can even choose the color of their house without any limits. The roofs, however, are a completely different story. When visiting, you will notice that they are all white and terraced. Here's why. Since there is no public water system in Bermuda, people living here have to collect their own water. And that's what the roofs are for. Rainwater is collected on the roofs and then funneled into water tanks for storage and future use. That's why it's so important that the roofs remain white. Not only is it much easier to spot debris on a white surface, but the white cement also helps with sanitizing the water. What about transportation? Well, only residents can drive a car here, and only a single car is permitted per household in terms of ownership. So if your trip itinerary includes renting a car, you may want to rethink it. If riding a bus is not your preference, there's always the option of renting a scooter. You just have to remember to drive on the left side of the road. It is a British colony after all. This wonderful location is also one of the few places on Earth with pink, sandy beaches. Because it's surrounded by coral reefs that are responsible for the special red pigment, Bermuda is home to some of the most spectacularly colored beaches in the world, such as Horseshoe Bay Beach, West Whale Bay, or South Shore Park. For those interested in more of a culinary experience, Bermuda has some interesting local dishes to explore. Its geographical location and the fact that it's surrounded by water mean that most local courses are based on fish and seafood. Here you can get a nice codfish breakfast, a Bermuda fish cake, or their famous Hoppin' John. A dish made with black-eyed peas, sliced sausage, bacon or chicken, Bermuda onion of course, and some brown rice, often seasoned with garlic and thyme. They do this last one for special occasions, like in January, during the Bermuda Restaurant Weeks, a culinary festival that you'd better not miss if you love a good feast. For a place to chill with a fantastic view, Bermuda offers two historic lighthouses, each with its own delightful peculiarities. To get to Gibbs Hill Lighthouse, for example, you would have to make a long pilgrimage up 185 steps. There's no elevator to get you there, so be sure you're properly hydrated before starting the journey. The panoramic view of the ocean, however, will make up for all the effort. There is also St. David's Lighthouse, which is known as an ideal spot for whale watching. Particularly in March and April, humpback whales generally pass through these waters as they travel north to their feeding grounds in Canada. The National Museum of Bermuda also provides an array of unique experiences, such as the Dolphin Quest. Through this program, tourists have the opportunity to view, meet, and interact with dolphins in a sheltered, natural ocean lagoon environment. Searching for the best hidden Instagrammable spots? Then Crystal and Fantasy Caves is the place for you. They were actually discovered by accident in 1907. Two young boys, Carl Gibbons and Edgar Hollis, lost their ball while playing cricket. When one of the boys went down a hole to get the ball back, he discovered this magical place full of crystal formations surrounding a beautiful lake. Crystal and Fantasy Caves attract a huge number of tourists each year, and through a number of recently constructed bridges, they are now more easily accessible. Be sure to wear comfortable shoes, though. There's lots of other geographic, historic, and cultural attractions I could talk about, but I think you get the gist. Bermuda is a lovely and vibrant island paradise that offers so much more than conspiracy theories about missing planes and lost cities. The weather is pleasant, the people are friendly, and there's so much to do on this beautiful island. So what are you waiting for? Book a flight today! <laughs> Just a suggestion, of course. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. 
This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors were encouraged to avoid it. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to set off, and when it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here – true north and magnetic north. But if you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths. 
Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet, since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's hulls with their sharp beaks. Toothy suction cups could break the masts and tear the sails. The water was filling the holes and slowly rising to the deck. The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle. Ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though, like there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the Sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower, so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation, which might lead to serious damage. So no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. What do you think? More than 50 ships and 20 planes have disappeared here since the middle of the 19th century. You won't find this place using an ordinary paper map, since it's not an official region of the Atlantic Ocean. It's just a small area of water in the shape of a triangle, located not far from the southeastern coast of the U.S. In the 20th century, this place became a legend. Some believe it's home to a secret base. Others are positive it's a time portal. Ships get caught in a strong storm and move to the past or the future. There's also a theory that the city of Atlantis is located right under the Bermuda Triangle. Its technologies create bursts of energy and destroy ships. Even airplanes have a chance to disappear in this area. All this has gone so far that if something strange happens in the ocean, Everyone thinks it's somehow connected with the Bermuda Triangle. The fear of the triangle has been made popular through books and movies. Directors, writers, and journalists like to use this theme. But in their works, you only see a few correct answers. You can find the truth about this place yourself if you look closely. But first, let's refute the weakest theories. Space objects, Atlantis, time travel. All these myths appeared in the middle of the 20th century. There weren't any records about mysterious phenomena before this time. People just noted that a lot of ships were sinking here. But then, one author wrote a book about Atlantis lying in the waters of the Triangle. The author didn't provide any evidence. 
but he described this hypothesis very convincingly. People read it and liked it. The human psyche likes to read something secret. When you learn something that no one knows about, it makes you feel special. And of course, you begin to believe in this secret. So this was one reason why the Bermuda Triangle book has become so popular. It brought the author a lot of money, and other people also wanted to enrich themselves the same way. Some other fantastic theories about time travel and secret bases have appeared since then. After that, people started making documentaries. All those works devoted to the mystical nature of the triangle were based not on real facts, but on theories from other books. It's impossible to find the truth in this chaos. Some people like to learn secrets, even if they're fake. But you can always find the truth if you really want. Just take any myth and try to find sources proving its reality. Most likely, you'll find nothing but non-scientific books and movies. There are also more realistic things about the triangle, but they are no less interesting. One hypothesis says that ships disappeared there because of methane. Deposits of this gas are under the seabed of this region. Sometimes it releases from there and rises to the surface. As soon as methane comes into contact with water, it takes the form of giant bubbles. Then these bubbles foam the water and create large waves that flip the ships. This theory is quite real, and such a natural phenomenon exists, but not in the Bermuda Triangle. None of the numerous studies have confirmed the presence of an increased concentration of this gas here. The last methane eruption occurred here about 15,000 years ago. Another realistic theory is rogue waves. They form without storms and winds. The calm water surface can transform into a big wave, the height of a five-story building, in three seconds. It sinks a ship and then quickly disappears. The sea is calm again as if there were no waves at all. Some scientists believe a surface sea current colliding with a strong headwind creates this phenomenon. But some recorded cases involved no wind. Another version says the wave is born thanks to the collision of warm and cold currents. But the most exciting theory talks about kinetic vampirism that forms the waves. Under certain natural conditions, waves get the ability to exchange kinetic energy. And among all the waves, there will be the biggest, the vampire one. It absorbs the energy from all the others. When the power is accumulated, the vampire wave splashes it out. This explains the force of the impact and its sudden disappearance. All theories seem logical, but scientists still can't figure out the nature of this phenomenon. Yes, rogue waves can carry ships underwater, but not only in the Bermuda Triangle. They rarely appear in all the waters of the world's oceans. So let's move on to the next theory. Some of those who sailed through this place reported their navigation devices had become unstable. The compass and electronics broke down. The signal and radio communications were lost. We need to look at the triangle from space to find out the reason. If you use special sensors and devices, you'll see that the Earth's magnetic field is weakened above the Bermuda Triangle. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. The ISS astronauts said that the triangle gets more of the sun's particles than any other part of the planet. Therefore, electronics are unstable in this area. But such failures don't occur with satellites and other space objects flying within our planet's atmosphere. Areas with a weakened magnetic field appear all over the world, and they hardly ever disrupt navigation. This means that ships and planes work stably in such conditions. But all the same, a compass doesn't work correctly in the triangle area. Could it be that some magnetic anomaly affects the navigation systems? This theory was quickly refuted. Scientists regularly check the magnetic map of this region and don't find any deviations from the norm. The reason for the unstable functioning of a compass is not an anomaly. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the few places on the planet where the true north and magnetic poles coincide. True north is the geographical north pole. The magnetic pole is constantly moving around the globe directly to the north. Sometimes these poles collide and cause such a phenomenon as agonic lines. If you fall under this line, your compass will behave strangely and won't point you to the true north. That's why so many ships disappeared in this place at the beginning of the 20th century. People used an ordinary compass. 
they didn't have modern navigation technologies, and the misfunctioning of the compass could have led to disastrous consequences. Imagine that you're a ship's captain in, let's say, 1901. Your compass is guiding your way. You know you always need to sail north to get to land. Then you get into the Bermuda Triangle. You look at the compass and notice the arrow position has slightly changed. Now you need to move in another direction. This direction is the wrong one, but you don't know about it yet. You take the wrong path and end up in the Caribbean region. This area is full of tiny islands, and the seabed is not deep here. Your ship gets on a shoal. You're stuck and have no idea where you are. That's how some ships disappeared in this region. But if you had GPS, you wouldn't have lost your route and would have sailed safely to land. By the way, now in the 21st century, you can use a compass here without problems, since the magnetic North Pole doesn't meet the true one on the territory of the Bermuda Triangle anymore. The agonic lines are somewhere else right now. But still, for some reason, ships get lost here. And now we come to the most unexpected solution to the Bermuda Triangle problem. Yes, boats sometimes disappear in this region. And the reason for this is... Water, ocean, nature, call it whatever you want. Unfortunately, ships sink all over the world. Don't be afraid of just one triangle. There are places in the Atlantic Ocean territory where more boats disappear. And the Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of them. But why does no one know about them? Well, it's because people wrote fairy tales about one particular place. One of the most popular ship routes of the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Can you guess where most shipwrecks occur statistically? In a place with many sailing ships. That is, in this region. The only true statement about the Bermuda Triangle is frequent storms. But even bad weather and a raging sea doesn't always sink ships. Also, hurricanes often form in the Triangle territory. The Bermuda region has high atmospheric pressure. This pressure diverts storm clouds away towards the Triangle. Strong winds and large waves can sink ships, and lightning flashes can damage planes, but this is not unique. So don't blame the Triangle for all the problems. It's a beautiful and picturesque place that attracts many tourists. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. As you probably know, the Bermuda Triangle is situated near the Bahama Islands. There's a strange structure around the bottom of the islands. The bottom of the ocean here is inconsistent. Every now and then, some otherwise sandy floor is replaced by giant dark holes, like a living place for some giant eel. The most common problem with those caverns, named blue holes, is that sometimes tidal waves can make them produce vortices and whirlpools. Experienced divers say that they're like waterfalls in the middle of the sea. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and was never seen again. The Cyclops never issued any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation, making it the largest ship to go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. No wreckage has ever been found. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. A lot of Bermuda Triangle stories feature reports, allegedly received from missing aircraft and ships. There are reports about strange cloud formations, tunnels in the air or above water, or the sudden appearance of thick fog sparkling with electric lights. As legend suggests, some of these anomalies are not only capable of completely disorienting any vessel, but also removing them from where they were altogether. Some enthusiasts of this theory draw a line between it and the experimentations of Joseph Hutchinson, 
who was trying to prove that electromagnetic fields can collide with each other and produce all kinds of disturbances to reality itself. He's done countless experiments in which electromagnetic fields were able to make objects levitate, fly out of the water, and begin to illuminate. Hutchinson himself thinks that similar things may have their place in special places like the Bermuda Triangle. There are some strange structures lying at the bottom of this eerie area. Some even reported the presence of giant pyramids here. In reality, the only giant things here are overstatements. The structures don't look like pyramids at all. They are called the Bimini Road. It lies northwest of the shore of North Bimini Island. In fact, it consists of two strange rock formations. Both look suspiciously like building blocks. Research showed that underlying ground layers beneath the Bimini Road feature nothing but bedrock, with no possible cavities in it. That totally excludes any possibility of these rocks being part of a building. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. William Shakespeare's famous play, The Tempest, was inspired by the Bermuda Triangle. Sailors returned home to England to tell stories of treacherous waters near the Bahamas where ships mysteriously disappeared. These stories made it back to the bard himself and inspired his final play about a storm at sea transporting a ship to a mysterious land. The shipwreck in Shakespeare's play is based on the 17th century ship Sea Venture. The ship was carrying supplies from England to Virginia when it was struck by a massive storm in the Bermuda Triangle. Sea Venture was battered by the storm for three days and barely made it to the shore. Survivors of the wreck were stranded on a desolate stretch of Bermuda for nine months. The floor of the ocean in the area is littered with shipwrecks from all over the world and of all ages. And as you can imagine, this is a sweet spot for treasure hunters brave enough to challenge the mysterious waters of this place. One of these treasure hunters was lucky enough to come across a secret map made from the orbit of the planet in the 60s during one of the first flights into space. This map reveals a lot of shipwreck coordinates in the Caribbean area. The luckiest treasure hunter in the world believed that these coordinates should lead to the remains of the ship that was part of Christopher Columbus's expedition. What he found there was a huge, unidentifiable object plastered with layers and layers of coral. It had long protrusions sticking out of it in bunches of five in different directions. Two more identical objects were found nearby. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area a danger zone, and sailors are encouraged to avoid it. The local people of Andros Island, part of the Bahamas, have a legend in their folklore about a giant, vile octopus-like creature named Luska. Nobody knows how big this creature could be, but they believe it is responsible for the disappearance of vessels in the area. Strangely enough, some giant octopuses were seen and even caught nearby, though they weren't nearly as big as the legendary creature. On the other hand, a giant octopus capable of dragging ships to rock bottom? Hmm, none have grown to a size this big as far as we know, so this version doesn't seem too concerning. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the rare places on the planet where True North and the Magnetic One are in the exact same direction. True North is the geographical north pole of our planet. Magnetic North directs to the North Magnetic Pole, which constantly wanders around the Earth. Sometimes these poles coincide, and the straight line that connects north and south is called the agonic line. If you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. It won't point exactly to the north. Astronauts of the International Space Station notice the Earth's magnetic field is weakened in the Bermuda Triangle area. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. 
Above the triangle, the particles of the sun's rays move faster than in any other part of the planet. This causes unstable work of electronics of satellites flying in the atmosphere of Earth. It doesn't apply to ships and planes, though. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large, unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Alaska has its own triangle. Since the late 80s, 16,000 people have disappeared there. Eyewitnesses to the Bermuda Triangle anomaly talk about thick fog, lightning, balls of light, and hallucinations. In Alaska, everything's a bit more complicated. People, planes, ships, they just disappear without a trace. There's no one around to tell us what it felt like. In 1950, a plane took off from Anchorage, Alaska, headed for Great Falls in Montana. It was carrying eight crew members and 36 passengers. Two hours after the start of the flight, the captain radioed that everything was fine. And then, silence. The 100-foot-long plane seemed to evaporate into thin air. 85 aircraft and around 7,000 people searched for the plane. No trace. Not even a screw, bolt, nothing. That plane mystery made the Alaskan Triangle famous. If you look on a map, it's a wild and mostly unpopulated zone that passes near Anchorage, Barrow, and Juneau. Hey, I didn't know about the Alaskan Triangle. Juneau? Yeah, that must be an old joke. In 1945, five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds. Despite the clear weather forecast, the pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we all go down together. And then, static. The five planes and their 14 passengers were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and was never seen again. The Cyclops never issued any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation, making it the largest ship to go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. No wreckage has ever been found. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the US on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. William Shakespeare's famous play, The Tempest, was inspired by the Bermuda Triangle. Sailors returned home to England to tell stories of treacherous waters near the Bahamas 
where ships mysteriously disappeared. These stories made it back to the bard himself and inspired his final play about a storm at sea transporting a ship to a mysterious land. The shipwreck in Shakespeare's play is based on the 17th century ship Sea Venture. The ship was carrying supplies from England to Virginia when it was struck by a massive storm in the Bermuda Triangle. Sea Venture was battered by the storm for three days and barely made it to the shore. Survivors of the wreck were stranded on a desolate stretch of Bermuda for nine months. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. Because the Bermuda Triangle isn't a recognized place, no one knows its exact location or size. Some people believe it covers around 500,000 square miles around the Bermuda area. Other people believe the triangle is as big as 1.5 million square miles. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. The Bermuda Triangle is home to the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, the Milwaukee Deep. The area has a maximum depth of over 27,000 feet. This is one of the deepest points in the ocean floor, but still not close to the massive 35,000 feet of the Mariana Trench, but the huge depth might explain how such little wreckage has been found. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. In the year 1800 again, the ship USS Insurgent was on patrol when it stopped briefly at a coastal base before heading back out to sea. That was the last time USS Insurgent was ever seen. A severe storm reportedly struck the West Indies around that time. It's believed that storm was so powerful, it could have caused the sinking of both the USS Insurgent and USS Pickering, which vanished around the same time. Like the Pickering, no wreckage of the insurgent was ever discovered. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Joshua Slocum was an extremely talented sailor. He was the first person to ever sail single-handedly around the world. But sadly, he was no match for the Bermuda Triangle. In November 1909, Slocum said goodbye to his wife and set off on one of his usual winter voyages to the West Indies. Slocum's wife reported him missing after several months passed without any contact. It's said that he called in at Miami to resupply before vanishing into the Bermuda Triangle. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Dragon's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone and sailors are encouraged to avoid it. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. 
the gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The United States Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in the Bermuda Triangle for the past 15,000 years. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive 15,000-mile search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. More than 50 ships and 20 planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle since the middle of the 19th century. This region isn't put on any paper map and is not an official region of the Atlantic. This massive water area is located not far from the southeastern coast of the U.S. and still scares many sailors. But you aren't afraid and want to prove that there is nothing special in this place. You sail to the center of the Bermuda Triangle on a small fishing boat. You turn off the engine and wait. Several hours pass. The sun goes below the horizon. Night comes. You're about to return to the shore, but suddenly, it becomes too quiet. Then, you hear a splash of water. You look overboard and see hundreds of fish swimming to the surface. Something big scared them away. Something that comes straight from the depths. The next second, you notice big sparkling eyes and long tentacles reaching for the boat. It seems that one of the most terrible myths about the Bermuda Triangle turned out to be true. A huge squid dragging ships to the bottom. Stories about these squids appeared long before the emergence of the Bermuda Triangle myths. For centuries, sailors from Norway and Greenland told stories about a scary sea monster, the Kraken. In those stories, the Kraken broke the decks of ships with its giant tentacles and dragged them to the bottom. The approach of this creature is impossible to see since it's coming to you not from the side, but from below. But all these were just stories. Only in the 19th century, scientific evidence of the existing of these monsters appeared. A beak of an unknown squid was found on the coast of Denmark. The size of the find was about three inches in diameter, which is about the size of a human palm. Then, it became clear that the Kraken was real, and it's just one variety of giant squid. Since then, more than 21 species of giant squid have been described. But the first video with this monster was recorded in 2004 in the waters of North Atlantic, not far from the Bermuda Triangle, marine biologists used a lure to draw the squid out of the depths. The huge monster was about 30 feet long, which is about half a subway car. It suddenly appeared out of the ocean darkness and quickly attacked the lure, squeezing it with its tentacles. After that, many cases of squid have been recorded on photos and video. Huge squids were washed up on the shore, swam past ships, According to some records, the largest monster ever found was 59 feet long and weighed almost a ton. This is the size of a big bus. Some scientists believe that giant squids can reach 150 feet in length, which is almost twice the size of a basketball court. But the big size is not enough to sink a ship. The first thing that helps squids do this is the surprise effect. Squids come from the depths, which mean they can be seen from the deck but the monster can see a boat from afar. It has the biggest eyes in the world. One eye is about the size of a basketball, 
The eyesight of a giant squid allows them to see prey in the black sea depths and from a big distance. Most sea creatures on the planet can't see in such conditions. So, the squid notices your ship and decides that it's food. It quickly approaches the boat and attacks with its tentacles. The squid has eight limbs and two extra longer tentacles the monster uses to bring food to the beak-shaped mouth. The others are covered with dozens of suction cups filled with sharp teeth. Nothing can escape if the squid grabs it. The squid wraps its tentacles around your boat. With the teeth on each arm, it bites the deck. Two long tentacles can grab you while you're running around in panic. The squid can rock the ship from side to side until one of its parts sinks in the water. You fight off two long tentacles and fall off your feet. The squid's eight arms are squeezing stronger. You can hear the boat's hull cracking. The squid is big, but still can't sink a large metal object. Possibly, it couldn't have sunk huge ships that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. You see how the squid swims away into the depths. You're lucky this time, but you definitely wouldn't handle two such monsters. The existence of giant squids was proven more than 150 years ago, but people still don't know anything about them. The fact is that they are some of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They swim fast, spending most of their time at depths of 1,300 to 3,000 feet. To descend there, people need sturdy submarines and bulky equipment that create a lot of noise. The squid will notice them much earlier and swim away. Scientists don't know anything about their behavior, social life, habits, or a distance they swim during the day. And most importantly, we don't know how many of them are hidden in the water. The ocean is only 5% explored. It's possible that millions of giant squids swim in the sea depths. Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet, since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's bodies with their sharp beaks. Toothy suction cups could break the mass and tear the sails. The water was filling the holes and slowly rising to the deck. The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. You start the engine to swim to the shore and notice that about 30 tentacles are reaching out to you from the water. Three giant squids squeeze the boat from all sides and pull it down. It looks like there's no way out. You look overboard and see black eyes looking right at you. At this moment, you find a solution. Squids spend their whole life in darkness and are afraid of the light. Fortunately, you have a signal rocket. You use it to scare the monsters away. Squids go back down into the water, but apparently not for long. You release a few more rockets into the ocean and scream in fear. The red light illuminates the sea darkness and you see hundreds of moving tentacles. They quickly swim away from the fire to a safe distance. At full throttle, you're sailing to the shore and releasing all the signal fires into the water. You don't give the squids a chance to get close to you. Finally, you get to land, confident that you will never return to this place. The bad news is, these creatures swim not only in the Bermuda Triangle. People found giant squid in the oceans all over the world. Yeah, it's possible the giant squid is the main reason for the disappearance of ships, but this doesn't make the Bermuda Triangle a unique place. Boats and cargo ships disappear all over the Atlantic Ocean. The Triangle is not even included in the top 10 of such places. Also, this area is one of the most popular shipping routes of the Atlantic. And the more ships sail in one place, the more ships are lost. Many scientists believe the reason of the disappearances here is strong storms and hurricanes. Bermuda is located in an area of high pressure, which diverts thunderstorms towards the Triangle. The waves reach such sizes here that they can turn ships over. Thunder and frequent flashes of lightning disable planes. The Earth's magnetic field is weakened at the location of the triangle. This field works as a shield, which repels solar particles. Here, solar radiation passes through the upper layers of the atmosphere and can negatively affect the electronics operation. Also, there is a theory that says that the Bermuda Triangle is the center of a magnetic anomaly. But scientists made many checks of the magnetic map of this region and haven't found any oddities. Can you drive faster, please? You ask the taxi driver nervously. You arrive at the airport and quickly grab your bags from the trunk, rushing to the building in cold sweat. 
You bump into people in the crowd, apologizing on your every step, and finally, you're on board. In a few hours, you go from the airport straight to the yacht awaiting you in the harbor, and only seeing the shore drift away from you brings you calm. At last, your Bahamas vacation has begun. You lie down and close your eyes in peace. A slight rocking of the yacht wakes you up. You don't know exactly how long you slept, but the sun is slowly sinking below the horizon. You enjoy a magnificent red sunset, but after a minute, you suddenly realize that you can't see the shore. You run across the deck, looking this way and that. The endless ocean is everywhere. You reassure yourself of having navigational skills and go to the bridge. You look at the compass and see the arrow turning like crazy. Oh, the Bahamas, the Atlantic Ocean, the compass. Wait a minute. Oh no, you're in the Bermuda Triangle. You've heard a lot of stories about this place. Sea monsters, an extraterrestrial base, time loops, and Atlantis. But what to believe? Try to guess which of the theories about the Bermuda Triangle are true. So, the compass, GPS, and internet on your phone become useless. All electronic stuff isn't working. You can't start the yacht's engine to leave this place. Does this happen in the Bermuda Triangle or not? One of the most popular shipping routes passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Every year, many ships sail here, and since the 19th century, only 50 have disappeared. There are places on the planet where many more ships were gone. And if there were serious problems with navigation in the Triangle, then the ships would never sail here. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here, true north and magnetic north. If you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. Your navigation is fine. The electronic stuff is fine too. But the fuel on your yacht ran out since you forgot to turn off the engine. You call the rescuers, and they promise to get to you soon. At this moment, a low-frequency noise comes from the depths of the ocean. The sky is twilight, and you notice a bright glow coming from the water. Then, a few feet away, a huge beam of orange light bursts out of the water and rushes into the sky. Another beam shoots out from the other side of the yacht. The starry sky is overcast. It seems like a huge blaster is shooting plasma columns into the sky. A new circle of light appears around your yacht. It gets brighter and brighter, and the energy charge breaks your ship in half. In a life jacket, you jump into the water screaming. A bright light is formed right below you, and of course, it's all fairy tales. One of the most popular theories is that the site of the Bermuda Triangle was once the ancient city of Atlantis. The people who lived there had amazing technologies that have no rivals in the modern world. And among these technologies, energy crystals were the most incredible. They generated energy and fed it to all of Atlantis. The city is sunken. But the crystals continue to work and release rays of energy directly from the sea floor. This legend appeared around the middle of the 20th century. It was the beginning of all the other popular myths about the Bermuda Triangle. You sit in the cabin and wait for the rescuers. The yacht is rocking. A storm is coming. You look out the window to understand how serious it is, but you can't see anything. Something dark and sticky has pressed itself against the glass from the outside, and this something is moving. It's a huge tentacle. They're everywhere, clinging to the yacht from all sides. You hear the ship's planks crack and run out onto the deck. A heavy thunderstorm has come, and a huge squid appears from the water. It wraps its tentacles around the yacht and pulls it down. You can't move out of fear. This is also not true. Gigantic squids do exist, but they swim in all the oceans and aren't able to sink big ships. There's no evidence that the kraken or other similar monsters live in the Bermuda Triangle's depths. Somewhere far away on the horizon, you notice a ship. Finally, the rescuers! You sit on the deck, grab a soda, and wait quietly for them. Strangely, their ship is so slow. Then you notice that it's made of wood and has black sails. You can hear shouts and cheers. They're pirates with eye patches, sabers, and parrots. Yar! 
They sail closer and throw ropes on the deck of your yacht. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths, and you're sitting in our reality and still waiting for rescuers. A storm does begin, though. Huge waves shake the ship. You realize the rescuers will not get to you in this weather, so you'll have to wait until morning. You put on a life jacket and hold on tightly to the steering wheel. The storm seems not too strong, but at this moment, to the right of the yacht, you notice a huge wave. It's the size of a 10-story building. The wave appears too quickly and turns your ship over like a feather. The impact is so hard that the yacht turns over twice and remains on the water. The huge wave dissipates as suddenly as it appeared. A second later, a bright light bursts through the clouds. This is not the sun, but a glowing disk. It descends towards your yacht and changes the gravity. Your ship is slowly rising into the air. A loud howl strikes your ears. The glowing disk opens, and you find yourself in a black space. This is also a legend. Spaceships from other galaxies don't abduct people in the triangle. You're back on the deck during a storm. That huge wave was real, by the way. This phenomenon is called rogue waves. People see them all over the world, and not just during storms. A rogue wave can suddenly appear during a calm sea. Even now, scientists have not fully studied the nature of this phenomenon. Many believe the waves transfer kinetic energy to each other and create a single wave that spits out the charge and becomes unexpectedly huge. Immediately after that, the wave disappears as the energy has run out. There's no evidence that these waves are often happening in the triangle. However, the Bermuda region is subject to frequent storms and hurricanes. In such conditions, the rogue can easily appear. The storm is ending. You're glad you managed to survive. You can see the first rays of the sun and hear the water foaming around the yacht. There are no waves. The sea is calm, but the surface of the ocean behaves strangely. It looks like the yacht has been caught in a huge bowl of boiling soup. The boiling is so strong that the ship is rocking wildly. You hold on tightly to the steering wheel, but an especially powerful thrash throws you overboard. Calm down, everything's fine. There's a realistic but unconfirmed theory that says there are methane deposits under the Bermuda Triangle. Sometimes, the gas comes out from below the sea floor and fills the water with huge bubbles that foam the surface. This phenomenon exists, but numerous studies have shown that there's no methane concentration in the Bermuda Triangle. You have already spent almost 24 hours in one of the most mysterious places on the planet and survived. Finally, you see the rescuers. The ship is approaching you. People take out canisters of fuel to refill your yacht. But at this moment, you see a huge fin the size of a sailboat. And then a huge shark jumps out of the water. Its jaws are filled with hundreds of sharp teeth as big as an adult's palm. The shark pounces on your yacht and pulls it to the bottom. Okay, okay, that's not true either. In fact, there's not even such a myth about the Megalodon swimming in the Bermuda Triangle. April 10th, 1912. You're on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean in a small port town. Hundreds of people, and you among them, are going to board the huge majestic ship. It's three times as long as the Statue of Liberty is tall. The ship is considered the most advanced and unsinkable watercraft of its time. You can see hundreds of luxury cabin windows on its deck and the Titanic inscription on the magnificent iron hull. This day, the famous superliner set off on its first and last voyage from Southampton to New York. But now, you'll see an alternate story. You can hear a crew member announcing the start of the Titanic's trip. The ship sails from Africa to Bermuda, and the cause of its catastrophe will not be an iceberg at all. For four days, Titanic sails through North Atlantic waters. The sun warms the ship so much that during the day, all the passengers sit inside the ship. In the evening, when a cool breeze descends on the ocean, all the people go up on deck to watch the beautiful red sunset. Midnight, April 15th. You're sitting in your cabin reading a book. You're usually asleep at this time, but right now, you're just flipping through page after page. You close the book and look around the cabin. You feel like someone's watching you. 
You get up and break out into a cold sweat. An inexplicable feeling of anxiety permeates your body and causes goosebumps. You look out the cabin window where the ocean spray is banging the glass, but you can't see anything. There's a thick fog outside. You leave the cabin. In addition to you, several passengers also left their beds because of a heightened sense of danger. They greet you and ask what's wrong, but no one knows. You head to the stairs to go out on the deck to see the situation. At this point, the floor goes out from under your feet. A strong push makes you fall. A rumble reverberates through the Titanic. You get up and see more and more people going out from their cabins. You run up the stairs and meet a crew member. He doesn't tell you anything, but his eyes are wide with fear. You go up on deck and can hardly see anything. A thick, wet fog has settled over the ship. Several passengers are holding their heads as if they have a headache. You see the captain and ask him what happened. The captain admits that he has no idea where you are. You see a compass in his hand. The arrow turns in different directions. It's impossible to determine where exactly the ship is now. Interestingly, there was no such thing as the Bermuda Triangle before 1964, but the first reports of missing ships in this area date back to the middle of the 19th century. Another push. This time you've managed to stay on your feet. It felt like something big just hit the ship. You run to the railing at the edge of the deck and stare overboard. Through the white fog, you notice a huge shark fin. You haven't seen the full size of the shark, but from what you've seen, it must be as long as a train car. The shark swims away, but after a few seconds, you can see its fin again. It quickly approaches the ship and grabs the iron hull with its huge jaws. The deck is shaking. You can hear the grinding of metal. It seems this huge predator just made a hole in the hull. Only one creature on the planet can do this, the Megalodon. It's an ancient marine predator that measured almost 60 feet in length. Megalodon had no competition in the ocean. It was at the top of the food chain. It's believed the shark disappeared millions of years ago, but the ocean is only 5% explored. Here, it's alive and swimming in the mysterious waters of the Bermuda Triangle. Everyone aboard the ship is panicking. People from the lower decks are running upstairs. The Titanic slowly sinks and tilts to the side. Everyone goes to the lifeboats, but no one dares to get in them while the huge ancient monster is around. The ship's bow submerges under the water. You stand on the left side of the deck and see the Megalodon bite off pieces of the iron hull. You shout to the people in the stern section that the Megalodon is busy and they have time to evacuate. The first rescue boats with passengers go down on the water. Some passengers just jump overboard. Fortunately, the water is much warmer than the place where the Titanic actually sank. You put on a life jacket and jump too. The Megalodon attacks the ship and drags it deeper into the water. The smell of the Titanic's kitchen must have attracted it. You find yourself among the ship's flotsam and lifeboats. The fog's finally rising. The starry sky and the moon illuminate the sea's surface. People help you to climb on board a rescue boat. Everyone tries to sail as far away from the sinking ship as possible. You see the huge shark swimming around the Titanic. At this moment, something distracts it and the predator goes away. More than half of the ship is already under the surface. The second part looks like a candle sticking out of the water. The ocean is calm. The sky's clear and cloudless. There's no wind. From the side, you see a huge wave growing behind the Titanic. It's about 50 feet high, like a five-story building. It knocks the ship down as easily as if it was made of paper. The monster wave dissolves in the water as quickly and unexpectedly as it appeared. You've just witnessed a rogue wave. This phenomenon occurs all over the world. Enormous waves suddenly appear, demolish ships, and disappear without a trace. Scientists still can't determine their exact nature, but according to the most popular theory, these waves are formed by kinetic vampirism. Under certain natural conditions, waves accumulate and exchange kinetic energy. Among all the waves out there, there is one vampire wave that absorbs the energy of all the others. When a lot of energy is accumulated, a huge wave grows and splashes it all out. Some believe the frequent disappearance of ships in the Bermuda Triangle occurred because of rogue waves. The people on the boats calm down. Someone sends a flare into the sky. 
You look at the ocean and see the triangular fin of the Megalodon emerging from the water. It's the size of a sailboat, and it's coming your way! You row the oars as fast as you can. People are screaming and calling for help. There's no chance of escape. The legendary monster is getting closer and closer. The shark's head peeks out from under the surface. It opens its huge maw filled with hundreds of sharp teeth. Each of them is the size of your palm. The boat would fit entirely inside the shark's mouth. It can swallow you whole. The shark stops and closes its mouth at arm's length from the boat. You can see the water bubbling around you. From the ocean depths, several giant tentacles lash out and wrap around the megalodon. They pull the shark down. You look over the side and see a purple glow with a black circle in the center. Someone on the boat notices it too. People start screaming, it's looking at us, a woman shouts. After a second, you get goosebumps and a shiver runs through your entire body. This purple glow is something's eye, and the black circle is the pupil. The creature that is looking at you right now is so big that the boat seems like a grain of rice to it. It's the Kraken! The giant squid, an ancient monster that sank hundreds of ships, but whose existence has not been proven by anyone yet. Fortunately, the boat you're sitting in is too small to interest the Kraken. You can see its eye moving deeper away, Huge tentacles pull the struggling megalodon into the depths. An hour passes, and another big superliner arrives at the wreck of the Titanic. All the passengers are rescued. You look back at the calm sea, at the place where the Titanic recently sailed. You climb aboard the rescue ship and promise yourself never to go on a sea voyage again. If you draw up a map, trace a line connecting the island of Bermuda, Puerto Rico, Miami, and back to Bermuda, what do you get? The infamous Triangle, known for swallowing thousands of ships and aircraft over the centuries. But there's a new mystery to this already enigmatic place. Something's lurking deep in the waters below, and it's leaving bizarre clues of its existence. Splash! Your submarine hits the water surface. You descend 100, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet. It's getting darker. The sub's walls creak as the pressure grows. Over 1,400 PSI. It's like the weight of a grand piano squeezing every square inch of your body from all sides. You've made it to your destination. All that's left is to spot the beast. Just in time. Among the black void, you see a bright green glow off in the distance. It's getting closer. As it approaches, it gets bigger. This is it! The creature that's been leaving strange circular markings on fish, dolphins, whales, and even other sharks. Behold! The cookie cutter shark! Don't let its size fool you. It may be no longer than a bowling pin, but this creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to other marine animals using its neatly arranged serrated teeth. With one bite, it fills its belly, detaches, and goes on about its day. Its mobile snack also swims away with its life. The only evidence of this rendezvous, a cookie-shaped mark on its body. Don't assume you're safe in your submarine. These bold little guys have been known to go after subs, too. You decide not to risk the shark punching a hole in the only thing keeping you from being squished to a pulp by the surrounding water. You journey on to meet other bizarre creatures lurking in the Bermuda Triangle. At twice the depth, you'll find the dragonfish. Unlike other deep water inhabitants, these things produce light in the infrared range. Blue and green is what other fish stick to. This gives the dragonfish a huge advantage. It provides itself with light that other marine dwellers just can't perceive. Things that want to eat the dragonfish can't detect this light, as well as the critters the dragonfish likes to feed on. A truly unique deep sea dweller is the vampire squid. Neither vampire nor squid, or octopus, this thing is a unique species of its own. It has the largest eyes compared to body size of any animal on the entire planet. When the vampire squid feels threatened, 
it curls its arms up and around its body. Essentially, the thing turns itself inside out. Another animal to avoid down here is the terrifying bobbit worm. It buries itself in the sea floor, leaving a small part of its body out. It waits for dinner time with its pincer-like mouth parts open. What's on the menu? Other worms and fish that can be seven times bigger than the bobbit. It uses its five antennas to sense when lunch is close enough to snap. In an instant, the worm launches forward and grabs its lunch with its mouth parts. It's not done yet. Once it's got its jaws locked onto its lunch, the worm injects it with venom and pulls it down into the burrow to feast. One of the deepest trenches in the Bermuda Triangle is the tongue of the ocean. This is also the secret breeding grounds of tiger sharks. You'll instantly recognize them thanks to those darker gray tiger stripes on their sides. They're the second largest predatory shark species after the great white. And with a big size comes a big appetite. Marine mammals, smaller sharks, stingrays, and green turtles are all on the menu. If you ever come face to face with a tiger shark, hopefully not, remember this. You can tell the fish's age by looking at its stripes. They fade over time, so the younger the shark, the more pronounced its stripes. There's plenty of zooplankton in the Bermuda Triangle. These are, usually, small organisms that are essential to the ocean's food chain. But get this, if nothing ate them and they were left to grow out of control, zooplankton would cover the entire world in layers and layers in just four months. Oh, and the largest type of zooplankton is the jellyfish. Jellyfish were around long before dinosaurs. You probably know your body is 60% water. A jellyfish is 95%. So if it gets washed onto the shore, after a few hours, most of its body just evaporates into the air. There's also a jellyfish that lives forever. The immortal jellyfish can revert itself back to its polyp stage and then grow again. Sounds like something from another planet, but it's no space jelly. Those do exist, by the way. Back in the 1990s, NASA raised jellyfish in space to see what zero gravity does to them. They were just fine living up there in the cosmos. When they came back down to Earth, though, they had trouble adjusting. The European eel hasn't been to space, but it is quite a globetrotter. It travels all the way from Europe to the Sargasso Sea, where the Bermuda Triangle is located. In the larval stage, it just drifts around the ocean for as long as three years sometimes. It's also the chameleon of the sea. Over the years, the European eel changes color, going from translucent to yellow to metallic silver. They're nocturnal and secretive, pretty much the ideal companion to have when you raid the fridge at midnight. A giant squid over half the length of a football field once washed up on a Florida beach. Researchers suspected this behemoth came from the Atlantic Ocean near the Bermuda Triangle. Giant squids are the longest invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone. They also have the biggest eyes on Earth, ever. They're as large as a soccer ball. Another creature found near the Bermuda Triangle is Starer's cave shrimp. They were so good at keeping to themselves that no one knew these creatures even existed until 2011. Some female cave shrimps carry an impressive number of eggs along with them. Scientists discovered one female had around 2,000 eggs attached to her body. The Bermuda petrel is the national bird of, yes, you guessed it, Bermuda. It's the second rarest seabird on the planet. In fact, people thought it was extinct until 1951 when they spotted a few on the island. It has an eerie cry that'll send shivers down your spine. The Nassau grouper can only be found on the coasts of South Florida. This fish lies in wait and ambushes its lunch of other fish, crabs, and lobsters. It's sort of like a vacuum cleaner because it inhales its food through its huge mouth. The fish has a cool defense mechanism too. Like the chameleon, it changes color when it feels it's in danger. 
Sometimes it takes on a lighter or darker shade of its own color to blend in with the environment. So, you may spot a Nassau grouper, or you may not. If you happen to visit the Bermuda Triangle, you'll probably see a hammerhead shark. They use that iconic hammer-shaped head to pin their lunch, stingrays, onto the ocean floor. The shape of their head also gives them better vision. They can see almost 360 degrees all around, above and below them. Well, save for one blind spot right in front of their nose. The hawksbill sea turtle may not look intimidating, but this guy will eat anything it can get its bird-like beak around. Sea sponges, algae, and even venomous jellyfish. A lot of the stuff on their menu is inedible for most, but their body fat can absorb the venom and toxins, so they go unscathed. The Bermuda Triangle is also home to green glowworms. They're not really worms, but larvae. They produce that bright light from an organ near their tail. This light makes smaller creatures come toward them, making it easy for them to catch their lunch. Most of the time, they look pretty ordinary, but they have an oddly fixed schedule. Every third night, after the full moon, during the summer, at an exact time, the glowworm lights up. But back to more nightmarish creatures of the Bermuda Triangle, there's the goblin shark, known as a living fossil because it's the only one left of its animal family. It's only about the length of your forearm and looks like nothing special. But watch closely as its lunch gets too close. Boom! The shark's jaw shoots out of its mouth and grabs onto the unlucky creature. Once the teeth have locked in, the jaw goes right back in the shark's mouth. And yes, you share the planet with this thing. Oh, hey there! Today you're going on a round-the-world trip. And even though Phineas Fogg was able to make this trip in 80 days, you know, like in the Jules Verne book, I can't promise you will return safely. The fact is that the world is now chock-full of unknown anomalies. They used to be observed only in the Bermuda Triangle, but now they're found everywhere. We start the journey from New York, and our first destination is Los Angeles. The best way to get there is by plane. But while even an ordinary plane is designed to withstand severe storms, yours is special. Your very own Iron Eagle has a reinforced hull, an enlarged fuel tank, and a rescue capsule that will ensure your survival in an emergency. Okay, you take off into clear sky. White clouds, bright sun, and no turbulence at all. But suddenly, this piece is shattered by strong winds, black clouds, and bolts of lightning. One cloud looks especially sinister. It seems to be alive and growing in size. You have no choice but to fly through it. You take a deep breath. As soon as you fly in there, everything plunges into absolute darkness. You can only see white flashes. They brightly illuminate black clouds for a couple of moments, but are nothing like lightning. The turbulence is increasing, and you can hardly hold the controls on your hands. Suddenly, the cloud begins to change its shape. It gradually forms some kind of tunnel, and you fly dead center of this ring. But now, the tunnel walls begin to close down on you. The only way out is to fly to the light at the end of the tunnel. So you increase thrust and focus. All the electronics of the plane are squeaking and warning of the danger. The engine is at its limit. You're sweating from tension. The walls of the tunnel almost touch the wings of the plane and… You did it! You left this dark cloud just at the very last moment. Ah, You can exhale with relief. Now you're in a dense gray fog. You don't see a gap in it for miles around. Your radar is malfunctioning and can't show you where you are. It's time to contact ground control and determine your location. And when you hear the ground control's reply, your eyes become like bowling balls in surprise. Turns out you're already in Los Angeles airspace. What? But this is just impossible. Usually this trip takes about 5 hours. 
But now you've traveled about 2,500 miles twice as fast. To understand this, we need to open an encyclopedia of Bermuda anomalies. It's quite popular among travelers today. You flick through to the chapter of time travel, and here it is. In December 1970, experienced pilot Bruce Gurnon fell into a similar anomaly in the Bermuda Triangle. He managed to survive and shared his experience. Scientists were able to explain most of the strange events he saw, but the journey through time is still a mystery. And now, there's a lot of these sky tunnels around the world. Well, this anomaly seems even useful. You've saved quite some time and fuel. It's time to land the plane, change transport, and head to your next destination, Japan. This time, you'll be traveling by ship. A voyage through the Pacific Ocean should be calm and peaceful, and you'll be able to rest after a difficult flight. In a couple of weeks, the captain of the ship comes down from the bridge and reports a terrible fact. You're lost at sea. The passengers are shocked. Some people start shouting at the captain, accusing him of incompetence. In response, he shows a compass that was supposed to help him in navigation. The device has gone crazy. Its hand is spinning like the second hand of a watch. Suddenly, a thought occurs to you. You must have entered another anomalous area, the Devil Sea. This is as mystical a place as the Bermuda Triangle, and it's marked with a red dot in your anomaly encyclopedia. Between 1950 and 1954, many ships and hundreds of crew members were lost there without a trace. In 1955, Japan sent its research ship Kayo Maru No. 5 here to find the cause of the disappearances. Unfortunately, that ship also went missing without a trace. But now you know there's a geomagnetic anomaly in this place, which drives all compasses crazy. This is because of high metal content in the ground underwater. The magnetic compass arrow is very sensitive to such things. So you take the situation into your own hands and suggest you use other navigation methods. Neither radio nor satellite navigation works either. So you raise your eyes to the sky and just watch the sun. The sunset is to the west, and it's exactly the direction you need. Pretty soon, you finally step on solid ground. Welcome to Japan! A couple of souvenirs and on to the airport. This time you're heading to the east coast of India. The flight is going fine, no turbulence or malfunction of the plane's tools. You observe the night sky through the window and suddenly see a strange light. It's small and moving up and down. Other passengers don't even pay attention to it. For them, it's a common thing. When you open your encyclopedia, you quickly learn that the first person who described this anomaly was Christopher Columbus. He said it was like a candle moving upwards. He also wrote that a flame suddenly burst out in the sea. It all happened just as he was sailing through the Bermuda Triangle area on his first journey to the New World. But now, these lights are a common sight around the planet. In India, you buy a ticket for a cruise liner that goes to Florida. This route is popular among tourists as it goes through many interesting anomalies. It's more of sightseeing now. The first of them is a ghost ship. The hunt for it lasted for weeks. Each time the cruise ship got close to the ghost, a thick fog fell on the water. Tourists stood on viewing platforms and looked for the mast of the ship in the distance. But it appeared and disappeared like a shark fin. Finally, you managed to get closer to the ship. But everyone is asked to stay on board the liner and not attempt to come aboard the ghost ship. All tourists know the sad story of when this ghost was first found. In 1880, the Ellen Austin found a drifting schooner in thick fog. The captain sent a few people to scout there. They found a lot of valuable cargo and personal belongings of the crew. But there was no trace of other people. It looked as if the entire crew of the ghost ship simply disappeared. The captain of the Ellen Austin decided to tow the ghost to the port to sell its cargo. But as soon as they started their voyage, a strong storm divided the ships and the ghost disappeared. The crew spent several days looking for it. They managed to find the schooner again, but the prize crew on it was gone, just like the original crew of the ghost ship. So you continue your journey. 
and after a while, you enter the most mysterious place on the planet, the Bermuda Triangle itself. This zone is considered the birthplace of all anomalies. All the tourists gather on one side of the ship. The place they're looking at is like a giant bubble bath. The captain of the ship makes an announcement. Any kind of open fire is strictly prohibited here. This anomaly is in fact a source of natural gas. Methane bubbles burst out of the Earth's crust and rise to the top. These deposits are responsible for the loss of many ships. Of course, if you light a match next to such bubbles, well, kaboom! The last stretch of the journey from Florida to New York will be very intense. There are extreme weather changes in this area. For the moment, the sun is shining and there is no wind at all. But in a second, there's a sudden strong storm. Lightning strikes literally every second, and the sky is completely covered with black clouds. And in another minute, the sun's rays disperse the clouds and the storm ends. This is another anomaly caused by the Gulf Stream current. Huge masses of warm air meet with colder ones. This provokes instant weather changes and violent storms. Many sailors and pilots were not ready for such conditions, and this led to entire ships and crews disappearing without a trace. But now, when these anomalies are everywhere, they're well studied and shouldn't be feared. You get home safe and sound, and you can boast that you have experienced the most brutal anomalies of the Bermuda Triangle. But please, can you lose the Bermuda shorts? It's just too much. A bright flash on your left. Boom! Where did that lightning come from? Your plane shakes, your instruments stop working. A minute ago, the sky was clear and blue. Now, it's pitch black. Your senses go haywire. You don't understand which way is up or down. It's a strange feeling. You're beyond time and space. Lightning flashes from all directions. Clouds envelop your plane and swirl it into a vortex. You grip the controls and repeat to yourself, I'll get out of this. I'll get out. Through the dark and thick clouds, you see a ray of light. It's your only chance. Your plane flies toward the light like a moth to a flame, and whoosh! You break out of the terrible whirlwind. Your instruments are back to normal. The plane's no longer shaking. You're saved. That's how pilots who face the Bermuda Triangle anomaly describe their experiences. Well, at least on TV shows. The huge chunk of ocean between Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico remained the planet's most mysterious area. But it's not alone. Alaska has its own triangle. Since the late 80s, 16,000 people have disappeared there. Eyewitnesses to the Bermuda Triangle anomaly talk about thick fog, lightning, balls of light, and hallucinations. In Alaska, everything's a bit more complicated. People, planes, ships. They just disappear without a trace. There's no one around to tell us what it felt like. In 1950, a plane took off from Anchorage, Alaska, headed for Great Falls in Montana. It was carrying eight crew members and 36 passengers. Two hours after the start of the flight, the captain radioed in that everything was fine. Then, silence. The 100-foot-long plane seemed to evaporate into thin air. 85 aircraft and around 7,000 people search for the plane. No trace. Not even a screw, bolt, nothing. That plane mystery made the Alaskan Triangle famous. If you look on a map, it's a wild and mostly unpopulated zone that passes near Anchorage, Barrow, and Juneau. If you connect the dots on a map, you get an epic triangle. You can fit the whole state of Oregon in it twice. If you read around, you'll find a bunch of major areas on the planet where weird stuff keeps happening over land, sea, desert, and jungle. Scientists have many questions about these places. They all have extreme electrical and magnetic anomalies. Planes and ships disappear in them. People hear stuff, see stuff, and hear some of them. China's Black Bamboo Valley looks like a Hollywood set for a seriously scary movie. Here, everything's creepy and mysterious. Ha, <laughs> perfect. Imagine a bamboo forest that stretches up 130 feet. The green plants live extremely close to each other and barely let in any sunlight. A strange fog hangs in the air. Where it comes from and why it's always there, no one knows. And the mysteries don't end there. 
For centuries, people have disappeared in the vast forest. Scientists believe the site's crazy geology is to blame. Cracks can suddenly appear in the ground big enough to fall into. There are sharp changes in weather, and maybe even poisonous steam. Certain trees give it off when they fall to the ground. There's a long road through Ladakh in India. It's called the Magnetic Road. It slopes upwards and seems to violate the laws of gravity. Here's what happens. You drive to the foot of the hill, turn off the engine, and get out of the car. The car starts rolling uphill, up to 12 miles per hour. Why does it happen? Theory 1? The hill has an incredibly strong magnetic pull, and it attracts cars once they get too close. The Indian Air Force supposedly avoids flying over it to avoid any interference with their equipment. Version 2. It's all just an optical illusion. The hills around it seem to fade into the horizon. It looks to us like the road is sloped up, but it's actually not. Huge Lake Michigan looks more like a sea than a lake. And over the past 400 years, 6,000 ships have disappeared in it. Why does it happen? The lake has its own mysterious triangle, and there are actually more unsolved mysteries here than in the famous Bermuda Triangle. In 1950, Flight 2501 disappeared over the lake, en route from New York to Minneapolis. The fate of the three crew members and 55 passengers remains unknown. In 2007, an underwater archaeology professor was surveying the bottom of Lake Michigan. He found stones arranged in a circle 40 feet down from the surface. They kind of looked like Stonehenge in England, but why were they at the bottom of a lake? Who put them there? Archaeologists found a carved pattern on one of the stones. Its outline resembles a drawing of an animal. Now, that's not unusual, except that this particular animal, which looks like a mammoth, was probably carved around 10,000 years ago. Sleep is very difficult for the Venezuelan locals who live near Lake Maracaibo. Right at the place where the Catatumbo River flows into the lake, there are huge electrical storms that can go up to 10 hours long. 260 days a year. That's over a million lightning bolts over the lake every year. Scientists don't know exactly what causes the daily lightning parties. Some people think it's due to the gas methane, which comes out of the ground. Other scientists blame uranium deposits in the soil. Nowadays, though, most researchers are sure that the lightning's caused by weather. Cold mountain air smashes against warm sea air. The result? A lot of friction and moisture, the perfect combo for near-nightly natural fireworks. It's super loud and kind of annoying if you live nearby. But the area is really important for the planet. It helps regenerate our vital atmospheric ozone. And the one that started it all? The Bermuda Triangle. Planes, ships, all gone without a trace. The theories are endless. Scientists even think there might be a huge meteor at the bottom of the sea that emits its own magnetic energy. It might have confused the navigation equipment on all those unlucky carriers. And it's been going on for a while. Researchers think that it was causing trouble even way back in Columbus's time. As far as Alaska is concerned, magnetic anomalies are a dime a dozen. Around here, your compass might be off by 5, 30, or even 60 degrees. But equipment malfunction isn't really enough to explain the disappearance of so many aircraft and people in this absolutely massive state. Alaska is wild. High mountains, never-ending forests, snow in the winter, and some serious heat in the summer. There are 3 million lakes, 12,000 rivers, and around 100,000 glaciers. There's only one person per square mile. California has over 250. You could walk for days, weeks, even months without seeing anyone, except maybe a bear or two. And the days and nights can be really confusing this far north. Tourists from all over the world dream of coming to Alaska to see the planet as it was before. No concrete jungle, no endless roads, warehouses, and cornfields. But this isn't just a beautiful place. It's also an incredibly dangerous place. You can get lost in the forest, run out of food, get soaked to the bone, lose your compass or GPS. In the harsh conditions of Alaska, danger's always just around the corner. Most vacationers just aren't prepared for that. 80% of the state's communities aren't connected to the road system. Back in the Wild West, horses carried people, products, and information. In Alaska, it's all about planes. 
Alaska has 9,000 aircraft and 8,000 pilots, and counting. That's more than one out of every 100 Alaskans. Sudden weather changes, frequent and wild rain, snowstorms, and fog. Not a great recipe for a smooth flight. The wings on Alaskan planes can get covered with ice. The fog can hide the snowy mountaintops. And strong gusts of wind can knock a tiny plane way off course. That's what those pilots have to deal with every time they take off. So, that plane that disappeared? Investigators believe that the Douglas C-54 Skymaster disappeared due to bad weather, and any debris was covered with snow or fell into a lake. 5% of Alaska is covered in glaciers, and there are loads of cracks in them, some big enough to fit a person, a few people, or even a whole airplane. The moon shines brightly and illuminates the black water of the ocean. Thick fog descends on it in ominous silence. Then, it's suddenly broken by the creaking of wooden boards, followed by a rippling of the waves. Through the fog, you see the outline of an old, large ship. Its hull is rusty, and a strange cold is coming from it. But the most unsettling thing is that there's no one on the deck. The ship sails without a crew. No, this isn't a mythical Flying Dutchman but a very real ghost ship. September 2nd, 2019. The British Royal Navy's ice patrol ship, called the HMS Protector, sails through the calm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The time is 11 p.m. Some of the ship's crew are on deck, while others are sleeping in their cabins. The captain steers the ship and looks straight at the horizon. The sky is lit up by an orange twilight and clouds float in the distance. Suddenly, Against this beautiful landscape, one of the sailors notices the black silhouette of an unknown ship. The captain slows down and steers the ship a little closer to the mysterious vessel. This is an old cargo ship, 250 feet long. Attempts to contact the crew members lead to nothing. It seems the unknown boat is floating in the ocean by itself. There's no one on board, at least no one alive. The deck of the ship creaks from rocking on the waves. The sun sinks below the horizon, and it gets dark. The ship looks terrifying. British sailors don't dare to climb on that strange deck. They take a photo, post it on the internet, and sail away. Many people on the internet will assume the sailors met a real ghost ship. Five months later, we're in the village of Ballycotton in County Cork, Ireland. A local leaves the house early in the morning to go for a daily run. Music in his headphones, fresh cool air, and a scenic route are ideal conditions for a good workout. The jogger runs along the road on the coast of the Celtic Sea. There was a strong storm last night, and now the sea looks calm. The man runs along the top of a low cliff and notices a huge vessel. An old rusty cargo ship 250 feet long lies on the beach right among the rocks. No people on board. It seems the ship has been here for ages, but the local is sure this vessel wasn't here yesterday. A little later, it turns out this is the same ship that the sailors from the HMS Protector saw five months ago, thousands of miles from this place. The cargo ship, called the Alta, was built in 1976. Nobody knows who used it all this time and for what purposes. It's only known that in 2017, the ship was purchased by a new owner and marked with the flag of Tanzania. It's important to say that almost all cargo ships are equipped with AIS, Automatic Identification System, which is needed to track ship movements in the ocean. Since 2015, something strange started happening with the Alta's AIS. The ship disappeared from the satellites, then reappeared again. Over the past few years, this ship had changed several names and flags. It's not surprising that its AIS shut off and turned on numerous times. It's said that some of those who disable AIS on their ships do so to hide outlaw activities. The ship's captain, whoever it was, clearly didn't want to show the Alta's movements. As AIS showed in 2017, the ship had sailed near Greek port cities. 
The Alta made 12 stops in three such cities in different parts of Greece. Then, the AIS signal disappeared. And 10 months later, the Alta reappeared near the northern coast of Africa, 1,200 miles from Greece. In September of 2018, the ship was sailing about 1,400 miles southeast of Bermuda. And at that time, the crew members started having problems. There were 10 people on board the Alta. On September 19th, the ship's engine failed right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The nearest shore was very far away. The ship began to drift. As days passed, the crew couldn't fix the vessel. Food supplies were running low. The crew started to panic and tried to contact someone. The situation got worse as a strong hurricane was approaching the place where the ship broke down. Crew members contacted the U.S. Coast Guard. On October 2nd, a helicopter headed towards the ship. Food and water were unloaded on the Alta. This was enough for the crew to bide their time for several days. About a week later, a rescue boat sailed about 1,500 miles to reach the Alta and help the stranded sailors. Shortly before the start of the hurricane, American rescuers succeeded. The entire crew of the wrecked ship was taken to Puerto Rico. The Alta remained drifting in the ocean. After a while, another ship arrived to tow it to the coast of Guiana. Then, something went wrong again. The ship was hijacked. Who did it and why remains a mystery to this day. But then, for some unknown reason, the thieves decided to abandon the ship and left it to drift in the ocean. For almost a year, the ship's location couldn't be tracked. Then, in September 2019, the vessel was found by the British Royal Navy. How the Alta was able to cover the distance across the Atlantic and wash up on the coast of Ireland is unknown. An investigation has been launched in Ireland. It's necessary to identify the owner of the vessel and find a responsible person to take on the task of towing it. But no one has since been found. Once, an unknown person called the Irish authorities and introduced themselves as the owner of the ship, but didn't provide any evidence. Several barrels of oil were found on board the Alta. To dismantle the ship, the Irish authorities will need to spend about 10 million euros. Local residents are annoyed by the wreck too. Corroding metal is bad for the environment, and kids have already snuck on board and posted a video on the internet from inside the abandoned ship. The further fate of the Alta remains unresolved. It's still lying there. That ship sailed in the ocean for just two years. Now imagine if some other managed to drift for 38. In all that time, no one could catch this ship, and people still seek it. That vessel is called the SS Bechimo. It was a merchant ship owned by a Canadian trading company. In 1931, the ship got stuck in ice off the coast of Alaska. A strong snowstorm began. The team waited a week for it to end, but the storm only intensified. One day, the weather improved a bit, and part of the team was evacuated to the nearest city. Another part of the crew with the captain set up camp near the ship. The storm started again and didn't stop for a long time. The blizzard was so heavy that the ship's captain couldn't see beyond his arm's reach. Finally, when the storm was over, the captain saw that the ship simply vanished. He decided the Bechimo sank during the storm. A week later, the ship was found, drifting near the place where it was lost. The hull of the ship was damaged so badly that it was unsafe to sail on it. The captain decided to abandon the ship. However, it didn't sink. For the next 38 years, it was drifting at various points along the Alaskan coast. Several times, people climbed on the ship, including native Alaskan residents and a group of researchers. Attempts to save the vessel from the sea ended in failure. The salvage operations were hampered by drifting ice and bad weather. The last time it was seen was in 1969. The ship was frozen and blocked by the ice. In 2006, the government created a special project to find the Bechimo. However, in all these years, the ship still hasn't been found. Its fate is unknown. It's likely that the ship has finally found peace 
and is now lying on the seabed of the Chukchi Sea. Far out in the open sea on a perfectly calm day, a dot appears on the horizon. It grows in size as it gets closer, and soon you can see it's a ship. But when you look at it through the spyglass, chills go down your spine. The vessel is in perfect condition and its cargo is on board, but it's completely devoid of people, drifting listlessly along the current. That was what the captain of the Ellen Austin saw in 1881 and what brought his crew so many sorrows. In December of the previous year, the Ellen Austin, a big 210-foot-long ship, left the port of Liverpool to make its trip to New York. The ship was carrying a load of people, hoping to find a better life in the new world. Captain A.J. Griffin took the vessel due southwest for a shorter voyage, and a few weeks into 1881, they found themselves north of the Sargasso Sea, known for its lack of winds and strong circling currents. Ships that got caught in those could lose control and keep on drifting in circles until they were dragged into the center. From there, they'd be incredibly lucky to get back past the currents. But more often than not, they stayed in the desolate desert of the sea forever. Worse still, the area belonged to the notorious Bermuda Triangle, which was already known to take down ships and make them disappear without a trace. The ship's crew were nervous, afraid of being in such a dangerous area so close to a sea that could bring them to a standstill. And ominously, some of the Sargasso Sea's calm must have escaped it, because the Ellen Austin lost its speed one day and fell adrift without the winds. It was fine, though. They had ample provisions and were still on schedule. Captain Griffin was walking around his ship, giving orders in a voice full of calm authority, and both his crew and passengers trusted him completely. But then, the lookout shouted from above that a ship was in sight. And indeed, when the captain looked in the direction the man was pointing, he saw a small schooner moving slowly into view and towards the Ellen Austin. As it came closer, it became apparent that the way the strange vessel moved wasn't right. The captain frowned and examined it through his spyglass. The schooner was untouched, but eerily silent. There wasn't a single soul on board. Derelict ships weren't that rare in the Atlantic at the time, but neither were pirates. Captain Griffin decided to wait and watch. After two days, the schooner was as quiet as always, and Captain finally thought it was fine to move in. He took a small team of sailors and boarded the stranded ship. There was nobody there indeed, but luck seemed to be on Griffin's side. The precious cargo of mahogany wood was still in the holds. The captain returned to the Ellen Austin and ordered his select men to take the smaller ship along to New York. The crew's spirits arose with the prospect of riches awaiting them upon arrival. When the winds blew strong again, the Ellen Austin continued its voyage, with the unnamed vessel tagging along. But after a couple of days, the ships were caught in a powerful storm and got separated. The wind, rain, and waves beat them for several days in a row. When the weather finally cleared, Captain Griffin ordered to find the schooner. They searched for another day until they finally found it adrift, way off the course. Griffin hailed his men on board the smaller ship, but no one answered. A party of sailors went to investigate and returned with their faces white with fear. The whole prize crew went missing in the storm. The captain wasn't one to lose such a valuable find, though, and ordered another team to take control of the schooner. Reluctantly, the sailors obeyed, and the two ships continued their voyage. They agreed to stay as close as possible to one another and ring their bells at set intervals at night to let each other know they were fine. Several nights went all right, with bells ringing reassuringly every hour. But one day, a thick blanket of fog fell on the sea and almost completely blocked their vision. The ships went on regardless and started sounding their bells earlier. When night came, the fog was still there, but the bells were the sound of life. Until they stopped. Captain Griffin rang the bell once, then twice. No answer. The crew lit the fires and looked out into the sea intently. 
but the fog hadn't lifted, and they couldn't see a thing in the swirling abyss beyond the ship's board. Nobody could sleep that night, and they waited in silence until the break of dawn. The first rays of sun made the fog slowly disperse, and the whole crew went to the edge of the deck with heavy hearts. There was still hope in them, until the last strands of the mist went away, revealing a vast, calm, and most importantly, empty ocean. The nameless schooner was gone, and so was the second team of the Ellen Austin sailors. The ship sailed the rest of the way to New York in grave silence. Once it arrived at the port, the passengers were only too happy to leave the vessel, and no one so much as turned their head as a goodbye. That was the ship's last voyage as the Ellen Austin. That same year, it was sold to a German shipping company and renamed Meta. No one ever found the derelict schooner or the sailors that went missing with it. And that would probably be the end of this mysterious and unresolved story, if it held at least a little bit of the truth. In reality, none of the enigmatic things in the narrative actually happened. The Ellen Austin did indeed leave Liverpool and headed southwest to New York, and its captain was really A.J. Griffin, taking people to the American continent. But from here, the story falls apart. First of all, the ship went way too far to the north to pass the Sargasso Sea so closely. There was simply no reason to make a detour so broad. Even though the westerly winds were strong, it was still faster to take them head-on than to go in a southerly direction. So the Ellen Austin was probably nowhere near the Sargasso Sea and the Bermuda Triangle. Secondly, the triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, it gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So the crew of the Ellen Austin weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. Thirdly, the whole story was told and retold by magazines and mystery-loving personalities with ever-changing details. It first appeared in a newspaper in 1906 and already had the date wrong. The article said the voyage took place in 1891 instead of 1881. Later, the story resurfaced in 1935 on the radio with the wrong name of the captain. It was Baker, not Griffin. The date was also off, saying the trip was taken in August 1881, when the Ellen Austin was already renamed Meta. The legend grew upon with other strange details, such as the ship's route from London to Newfoundland, which was never the case. But the final debunking came from the archives of Lloyd's of London, the marine insurance market that keeps all logs of trade and emigration ship routes. The documents there say that on February 1881, the Ellen Austin completed its cross-Atlantic voyage to New York without incident. Captain A.J. Griffin off-boarded the ship with all his crew hale and hearty and declared no loss of hands during the trip. The voyage took over two months because the ship had to fight strong westerly winds pushing it back towards Britain. The crew reported no strange encounters on the way, and the whole thing was as boring as could be. And even the passengers must have been smiling when they stepped on the American soil at last, unaware of the phony baloney story they were about to be a part of. Ah, the Bermuda Triangle. Such a lovely spot. Well, it's also known as the Devil's Triangle. Sailors and pilots around the world have been scared of this place for a long time. Stories of missing ships and planes have made plenty of people think it's an area of paranormal activity. Many people try to avoid traveling through it, and their fears make a lot of sense, because lots of the things that have happened there are difficult to explain. But let's have a look at flight radar for the area. The Bermuda Triangle is where the Caribbean islands are, and they're very popular places for people going on vacation. Millions of tourists visit these places every year, and they travel there on ships and planes. Plenty of small airplanes and boats constantly travel between the remote islands, and they don't encounter any spooky stuff. So you can be sure that all of the planes on this map are going to reach their destinations 
in one piece. But the myths about the Bermuda Triangle must have come from somewhere. So far, scientists and researchers haven't managed to explain some of the incidents that happened there. So let's deal with all the rumors and investigate some of the weirdest things that have gone on in the Bermuda Triangle. Mysterious things took place there even before we had modern satellite navigation systems. Pilots and the captains of ships used to navigate with compasses and maps. This is where people noticed the first strange thing about the Bermuda Triangle. Many old sailors claimed that their compasses just used to go crazy in this area. Their needles would just spin around or point in the wrong direction. But there's actually nothing creepy about this. There's a magnetic anomaly here, which is created by metal underground. Compasses react to magnetic anomalies in strange ways. They can be found all around the world and scientists know a lot about them. Plus, because ships and planes now have modern technology, they're no longer a danger to navigation. The Gulf Stream also runs through the Bermuda Triangle. Think of it as a river that flows within the ocean. Its current can reach a speed of 6 feet per second. This means it can probably be blamed for pushing some ships that pass through there off course. When they stray from their paths, it's pretty easy for these ships to get lost. But what's also important here is that the air of the Gulf Stream mixes with cold air, and the difference in pressure can cause severe storms. Some people think that these storms can become so powerful that they just demolish any ships and aircraft that are nearby. A lot of newbie sailors and pilots don't take this into account when they travel through the triangle. By the way, this is why it also gets called Hurricane Alley. Other people have more unusual explanations for the Bermuda Triangle, though. There's a theory that it's a favorite spot for visiting aliens from outer space. All the people that went missing there were actually taken by the aliens for their experiments. Hey, like I already said, lots of folks like this area for vacations. Other people think that the Triangle was home to the ancient civilization of Atlantis a few thousand years ago, in a place where the modern Bahamas are now. They say this civilization was mysteriously absorbed by the Bermuda Triangle. The theory is that the Triangle is basically a sort of portal to another dimension, and all the missing ships and planes were sucked into it. All these ideas are probably just myths, though. It's more likely that the tough weather conditions are what's really behind the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle, along with simple human mistakes. But the experts still can explain a few incidents that happened there, including one that apparently involved time travel. It all happened in December 1970. Bruce Gernon was flying a plane from Andros Islands to the Florida coast. When he was at 11,500 feet, a giant cloud appeared right in front of him. It got bigger and bigger, and there was no way he could fly around it. Instead, he had to go through it. As he flew inside, the plane was surrounded by darkness. It was as if the day had turned to night in a split second. Suddenly, Bruce began to see white flashes of light all around him. They were so bright that they lit up the entire sky. But they weren't lightning bolts, although he really couldn't explain what they were. His journey through the strange cloud lasted almost half an hour. During this time, the cloud changed shape. The space around the plane formed a tunnel. And then the tunnel began to get narrower. All the instruments and navigation equipment in the plane started going crazy, and the electronics stopped working. Bruce tried really hard to stay calm as he struggled with the controls. Then, a white light appeared at the end of the tunnel. The plane escaped the cloud tunnel just before it closed. Everything seemed fine, but now Bruce found himself in some kind of white fog. He had no idea where he was. He managed to contact ground control and was shocked when they told him his plane was already in the airspace above Miami. Something impossible had happened. Bruce's plane was meant to cover a distance of about 250 miles during the flight. This usually took about one and a half hours. But he'd managed it in just 47 minutes, about two times faster than normal. When he landed, the pilot went to check the amount of fuel left in his tank. It turned out that he had used up a lot less than the usual amount of fuel. How could this have happened? Well, records show that a lot of sunspots were detected on the surface of the sun that day, 
and there was a strong solar wind. This could easily have made the electronics and devices on the plane go crazy. But what about the mysterious cloud? Just like the rest of the Bermuda Triangle, the Florida coast is a place where two large air currents meet. One has high pressure, and the other is a low-pressure one. This causes a lot of storm clouds in the area. But people are still trying to work out how Bruce was able to cover the distance so quickly. Some people say that a kind of mysterious dark energy ooh, was involved. Others believe it was a gravitational anomaly that curved space and time. Others think Bruce is just a fraud. We still don't know the truth. Something just as weird happened in 1945. Five planes went missing all at the same time. Some trainee pilots were practicing their navigation skills out over the sea. But when they'd finished, it seems they couldn't find their way back home, and they disappeared. Many people assume they just ran out of fuel. This seems likely, but still, the circumstances were really strange. The trainees were being supervised by an experienced pilot who had 2,500 hours of flight time. He would never let a group of newbie pilots get that far away from their base. Even now, people still debate what could have happened. Some insist the pilots ran into something supernatural out there in the Bermuda Triangle. But who knows? Just three years after this, a passenger jet was heading for Miami from San Juan, Puerto Rico. The 32 people on board disappeared without a trace. There weren't any storm clouds this time. The skies were clear throughout the flight. But experts think that when the plane was about 50 miles from the coast, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. Years later, a similar plane was found in this area of the Bermuda Triangle. But because no one could work out the registration, it was impossible to say for sure if it was the same one. These stories sure are strange, but there's really no need to be too worried. Just remember this. A few years ago, the World Wildlife Fund did some research and came up with a list of the most dangerous seas in the world. The Bermuda Triangle is not even on this list. That's probably because no more accidents happen there than anywhere else in the world. Well, I feel better, don't you? The voyage started just like any other. The cargo ship SS Cotopaxi is making another journey to Havana, Cuba to deliver coal. It's November 29, 1925. For Captain Meyer and his crew, leaving Charleston Port, South Carolina, it will be the last trip the ship ever makes. Its route ran through the Bermuda Triangle. Two days into the trip, the Cotopaxi sent out a distress signal. It had got caught up in a strong tropical storm and turned over on its side. The wind was very strong and there was powerful lightning as well. Rain gradually filled the ship's hold. Then there was a bright white flash, and the ship disappeared without a trace. Later, its wreckage was found in the Gobi Desert, which is in a completely different part of the world. All 32 crew members, including the captain, were missing. Of course, the part about the Gobi Desert is fictional. For one of his movies, Steven Spielberg came up with the idea that the ship was moved there by aliens. Still, in real life, the ship was never found, and its crew really did disappear. It was officially declared missing a month afterward, and nobody could find the wreck. It seems like a classic case of mysterious things going on in the Bermuda Triangle. But most mysteries are solved sooner or later. In 2020, the Cotopaxi was found. A man named Michael Barnett had moved to Florida to study shipwrecks off the coast. One wreck in particular really caught his attention. It was much larger than the others, and the locals called it the Bear Wreck. It was about 40 miles from St. Augustine in northern Florida. But no one had ever managed to identify the rusty hull. So Michael started to do some detective work. He measured the size of the shipwreck and started working through all the information he could find. He researched hundreds of old newspapers, leafed through insurance records, and looked at artifacts found on the wreck. After hundreds of hours of hard work, Michael was sure it was the Cotopaxi. But a few years before, there had been a rumor that the same ship had been found off the coast of Cuba. 
The Coast Guard found the wreck of a cargo ship about the same size that looked a lot like the one lost in 1925. Michael was sure they were wrong, so he teamed up with some science journalists and kept investigating. Soon, they discovered something that seemed to confirm Michael's belief. Divers found brass valves with the letters SV on them in the wreckage of the ship. Michael suggested these initials referred to Scott Valve Manufacturing Company. The headquarters of this company was in Michigan, not far from where the Cotopaxi had been built. The company had probably supplied parts for the Cotopaxi. So the puzzle seemed to be solved. The bear wreck was really the missing cargo ship. But Michael still needed to work out why the ship had sunk. Did something mysterious really happen to the Cotopaxi in the Bermuda Triangle? Later, Michael found the testimony of the ship's carpenter among some old papers. The carpenter claimed that the hatches covering the coal on the ship had been in a terrible condition before it sank. Repair work on the covers wasn't finished before the crew got the order to sail to Cuba. So if the hatch covers were still broken during the trip, water could have easily gotten on board. This water probably flooded the hole during the tropical storm. This was the real reason why the Cotopaxi went down. There was really nothing mysterious about it. It was just a mistake made by ordinary people. But this is just one example out of dozens, or even hundreds, where ships and planes have gone missing in the Bermuda Triangle. We still can't explain some of these incidents. It seems like there really is something weird going on there. One of these strange events happened in 1948. A passenger jet was headed for Miami from San Juan, Puerto Rico. It disappeared in the same area as the Cotopaxi. The 32 people on board vanished without a trace. The weather was clear throughout the flight, but experts think that when the plane was about 50 miles from the coast, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. Years later, a similar plane was found in the area of the Bermuda Triangle. But because no one could work out the registration, it was impossible to say for sure if it was the same one. Something even stranger occurred not long before, in 1945. Five planes went missing all at the same time. Some trainee pilots were practicing their navigation skills. But when they'd finished, it seems they couldn't find their way back home and disappeared. Many people assumed they just ran out of fuel. This seems likely, but still, the circumstances were really strange. The trainees were being supervised by an experienced pilot who had 2,500 hours of flight time. He would never have let a group of newbie pilots get that far away from their base. Even now, people still debate what could have happened. Some insist the pilots ran into something supernatural out there in the Bermuda Triangle. But who knows? And here's another freaky thing that happened there which no expert has been able to explain. Time travel. In 1970, Bruce Gernon was flying a plane from Andros Island to the Florida coast. When he was at 11,500 feet, a giant cloud appeared in front of him. It kept getting bigger and bigger, and he had no choice but to fly through it. As soon as he did, the plane was surrounded by darkness. It was as if the day had turned to night in a split second. Suddenly, Bruce began to see white flashes of light around him. They were so bright that they lit up the entire sky. But they weren't lightning bolts, although he couldn't really explain what they were. The plane continued through the strange cloud for almost a half an hour. Bruce noticed that the cloud changed shape during this time. The space around the plane turned into a tunnel. Then the tunnel started narrowing. Bruce became really tense as he tried to cope with the plane's controls. All his instruments and navigation equipment were going crazy, and the electronics stopped working. Then, a white light appeared at the end of the tunnel. Just like in the movies, the plane escaped the closing cloud tunnel at the very last second. Everything was fine, but now Bruce found himself in some white fog. He had no idea where he was. Then, he managed to contact ground control. He was shocked when he learned that his plane was already in the airspace above Miami. It seemed that something impossible had happened. Bruce was meant to cover a distance of about 250 miles during the flight. This usually took one and a half hours. 
but he had managed it in just 47 minutes, almost two times faster than normal. When Bruce landed, he went to check the amount of fuel left in the tank. It turned out he'd used up a lot less than the normal amount of fuel as well. Could there be a logical explanation for the time-traveling plane? Well, records show that a large number of sunspots were detected on the surface of the sun that day. And there was a strong solar wind. This could easily have made the electronics and devices on the plane go crazy. But what about the mysterious cloud? The Florida coast is a place where two large air currents meet. One has a high pressure, and the other is a low pressure one. This causes a lot of storm clouds in the area. But people still debate how Bruce was able to cover the distance so quickly. Some people say that some kind of mysterious dark energy was involved. Others say it was a gravitational anomaly that curved space and time. Others think that Bruce is just a fraud. We still don't know the truth. So, is there really something supernatural about the Bermuda Triangle? Or is it all just coincidences and made-up stories? The truth is that no more planes and ships disappear in the Bermuda Triangle than anywhere else in the world. The airplane involved was a Beechcraft Bonanza single-engine aircraft. On board, pilot Bruce Gurnon had two passengers, his father and business partner. They took off from Andros Island in the Bahamas and headed northwest for the Florida coast. It was December 4, 1970. If you draw up a map, trace a line connecting the island of Bermuda, Puerto Rico, Miami, and back to Bermuda, what do you get? Yes, it's a triangle, a sinister polygon known for mysteriously swallowing over 2,000 ships and 200 aircraft over the centuries. Bruce Gurnon's plane was within its hungry grasp. But this was a typical flight Bruce had made dozens of times before. The trip usually took about an hour and a half, with no hiccups or mysterious phenomena whatsoever. The men were no more concerned than you would be during your daily commute to work. Oh, but this time would be different. They would face very unusual circumstances indeed. Bruce took off and started gaining altitude. Strange things started happening right from the get-go. At an altitude of about a thousand feet, he noticed a small cloud up ahead. But it kept growing. Not from the plane getting closer, this thing was actually getting bigger in size. Bruce had to fly through it, and he came out the other end just fine. Another mysterious cloud appeared at 11,500 feet. This one was massive, and Bruce had no other choice but to fly through it too. So he concentrated, took a deep breath, and in they went. At that moment, it got dark as night all around the aircraft. Not a single sliver of sunshine got through. But this wasn't a storm cloud, and it wasn't raining. Bruce was starting to get worried, and then, bam, he saw flashes of white light. They would appear and vanish quickly like lightning. But this pilot knew this certainly was no lightning. The flashes were so bright, they lit up the whole space around them. Bruce kept flying for another 30 minutes when he realized this was the same cloud he had gone through earlier when he started to climb. But now, the cloud was cylindrical, and the plane was flying through its center. It was about one mile wide and seemed endless. Bruce thought he could never get out of that trap. But a minute later, he saw light at the end of the tunnel. He kept that yoke straight ahead. He was almost out of this nightmare. But all of a sudden, unexplainable things started happening again. The walls of the cloud tunnel began to narrow. They were closing in on the plane. The navigational instruments started wigging out. The compass was spinning by itself counterclockwise. The electronic instruments were all malfunctioning. It was like the plane was being operated by something else. Or it was moving inside some kind of current. All of Bruce's attempts to take control were to no avail. He kept flying through that tunnel, bound and determined to get out of this thing and live to tell the tale. The walls kept narrowing, smaller and smaller, wrapping like a vortex. Bruce was running out of time. He had to get out of this place fast. The next 20 seconds were the most intense of his life. But then, he burst out of this foggy trap. 
As Bruce described later, he felt weightless for 5 seconds as his plane left the tunnel. The clouds dispersed, and now the aircraft was in a grayish haze. The men let out a big sigh of relief. He immediately grabbed the radio and contacted ground control. Bruce wanted them to determine his location. But when the dispatcher looked at the green screen, his face became contorted with confusion. Bruce's plane wasn't on the radar. It was as if the thing was invisible. But then the dispatcher said the aircraft was already in Miami airspace. Bruce was utterly shocked by this information. It just couldn't be true. The distance the Beechcraft was supposed to cover was about 250 miles. Remember, the whole trip usually took around 90 minutes. But this time, it took just 47 minutes to get to the destination. This model of aircraft can only cruise at about 180 miles per hour. Do the math, and anyone would understand that this was physically impossible. The dispatcher must have made a mistake. But when the clouds parted, Bruce saw that he really was over Miami. The plane landed safely, and it was time to try and solve this mystery. So what happened on that flight? Bruce checked the remaining fuel and his watch. After a short calculation, he was only more confused. The plane hadn't gone through the amount of fuel it should have. Bruce couldn't have been wrong. He was a very experienced pilot. By his early 20s, he already had 600 hours of flight under his belt. And he was all too familiar with this airspace he'd flown countless times. All the evidence in hand seemed to indicate that Bruce's plane just skipped over almost half the entire distance. The man thought about this bizarre occurrence for a long time. He even consulted with professors and experts. But none of them could give an exact answer to what happened that day. So he came up with his own theory and even wrote a book about it. Bruce thought it all came down to this electric fog with white flashes. Others, however, theorized that dark energy was responsible for this time leap. Yes, that same dark energy responsible for the expansion of the universe. This energy could have curved time-space like a black hole, forming this strange tunnel. Bruce accidentally hit it, but he was lucky to get out of there. That's how he got into Miami airspace so fast. But dark energy is just a theory attempting to explain the unexplainable. To this day, there is no real answer for how Bruce was able to travel that distance in such a short time. But some details still can be explained. Archive records show that 84 sunspots were recorded that day, as well as a huge solar wind moving almost 440 miles per second. This would cause disturbances in the Earth's magnetosphere that could throw off the plane's instruments and radars. So Bruce's version that he was in an electronic fog could be right. And about these weird clouds. The thing is, they're pretty commonplace things in this area. Zones with low and high pressure are constantly colliding there. The result? Storm clouds. Perhaps that cloud growing before Bruce's eyes was simply two massive air currents crashing into each other. But so far, no one has been able to explain how the plane got to Miami so fast. Well, maybe in the future the truth will be revealed. In the meantime, it remains another mysterious riddle of the Bermuda Triangle. But it's still by far not the most shocking incident there. In 1945, a total of five planes went missing in the Bermuda Triangle all at once. On December 5th, some Navy student pilots were training in the area. The day's lesson? Navigation. Ironically enough, they couldn't find their way back to the base and got lost. Many people assume they ran out of fuel. This is likely to have caused the incident, but the circumstances were very strange. The students were under the supervision of an experienced lieutenant who had 2,500 flight hours. He would never let a bunch of newbies go so far that they'd get lost. The incident was called Flight 19. Even now, there's a debate about how it could have happened. Three years later, a passenger jet headed to Miami from Puerto Rico disappeared in the same area. There were 29 passengers and three crew members on board. The weather was clear throughout the flight. But experts believe that when the plane was about 50 miles off the coast of Miami, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. 
Years later, divers found a similar-looking plane in the waters. But since it was lacking certain details and registrations, no one could confirm that it was the missing Miami-bound aircraft. The next month, in January 1948, another plane went missing in Bermuda. 25 passengers and 6 crew members just vanished somewhere between Azores and Bermuda. The mystery of this plane's disappearance, along with countless others, remains unsolved. Ships and planes disappearing without a trace. Passengers never seen or heard from again. Reports of strange lights in the sky. No, these aren't scenes from an upcoming Hollywood blockbuster, but some of the strange occurrences reported for over a century in an area ominously dubbed the Graveyard of Lake Ontario, also referred to as Canada's Bermuda Triangle, or the Marysburg Vortex. It stretches across a portion of Lake Ontario from Kingston to Prince Edward County in Canada and down to Oswego, New York in the US. The tales about this area can be as chilling as the frigid lake water on which they took place. The most unsettling story involves the schooner called the Bavaria. It was 1889 and the ship was being towed across the lake. Rough waters severed the tow rope and the Bavaria floated away. Luckily, the schooner was later found safe and fully intact. But there was one thing missing, the crew. Not a single person was found on board. What makes the story even more bizarre is that the dinner table was set, a loaf of bread was discovered, freshly baked, and the captain's money and his papers were fully accounted for. There was even a pet canary happily chirping away, as if nothing was amiss. What happened to the crew? We may never know. And this was not a unique incident. Just over a decade later, in 1900, three ships, the Annie Minnis, the Picton, and the Acacia, were sailing across the lake, but only two would make it to their final destination. The third one, the Picton, was speeding ahead of the others when it simply vanished. According to a cook on the Annie Minnis, we were well out into the lake and making good time when all of a sudden we saw the Picton's topsails coming off and then her lower sails settled. And then, while we stood and watched, the Picton just disappeared. It's possible that the ship sank as there was some wreckage later seen in the water, but the ship itself was never found, and none of its crew ever located. A few weeks later, a bottle with a note inside was discovered in Sackett's Harbor, New York. The note was from Captain Sidley of the Picton. Have lashed Vessie to me with heaving line, so that we will be found together. Vessie was the captain's 12-year-old son. The note creates more questions than answers. If the witnesses were correct, the ship's disappearance was quite quick. When did Captain Sidley know he was in danger? Why not signal for help if he had any warning? And when did he have time to write a note, bottle it, and tie himself to his son? It truly is a mystery. And it was not just ships that ran afoul of the strange forces in the area. Planes also struggled to make it through in one piece. In 1975, Ron Scott flew out from the Picton Airport in his Cessna 172. As he entered the Marysburg Vortex, his plane banked to the side. For several seconds, he was unable to right the plane, but once he did, the same force banked him to the other side. Again, he was stuck there for a few seconds, unable to control his plane. A skilled pilot, he had never experienced anything like it before. He was certainly luckier than Royal Canadian Air Force pilot Barry Allen Newman. Newman was at the same spot back in 1952, when he lost control of his jet and crashed into the lake. To this day, his body has not been found. In total, over 270 ships and at least 40 planes have met a tragic end in this area. And adding to the mystery, sometimes people report a series of bright lights or orbs, or a dark ship hovering in the sky. These are even harder to explain. Witnesses willing to report them are adamant they are true. Sid Wells said he watched a strange shape like a multifaceted diamond slowly spinning in the sky, and then it just disappeared. Others claim to have seen it too. Of course, the Marysburg Vortex is just one of several places around the world known as vile vortices, a term coined by biologist and writer Ivan T. Sanderson. He discovered 12 other equally spaced areas on the surface of Earth where funny things happen. 
The best known of these, of course, is the dreaded Bermuda Triangle. Situated in the Atlantic Ocean between Bermuda, Florida, and Puerto Rico, it has been blamed for the disappearance of thousands of people. They went in, on boats or in planes, but they never came out. Even the explorer Christopher Columbus experienced the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle during his first voyage to America in 1492. He said the compasses pointed in the wrong direction, the sea levels seemed to change dramatically, and he even spotted strange lights in the sky. In 1918, the USS Cyclops, which was one of the US Navy's biggest fuel ships, disappeared there. Since the 309 crew members were declared lost at sea when the Cyclops vanished, it's seen as the largest loss of life in the history of the US Navy in a single incident. At the time, the weather was good. The one message sent that day from the ship indicated no issues or concerns, and a distress signal was never sent. A thorough naval investigation followed. Its conclusion? Many theories have been advanced, but none that satisfactorily accounts for the ship's disappearance. In other words, the investigators were stumped. There's also the Dragon's Triangle, located in the Pacific Ocean. The most disturbing story involves a group of Japanese vessels that disappeared in the 1950s. When researchers were sent to investigate what happened, they too disappeared. In each case, it's impossible to truly know what occurred. And it's easy to get caught up in stories of giant sea monsters lurking beneath the waves. Who doesn't like a good scare? And Sanderson was willing to accept the possibility of such stories being true. He believed the vile vortices that he studied could be explained by anything from a wrinkle in the space-time continuum, to magnetic abnormalities, to underwater people. Of course, Sanderson was not only a huge fan of strange places, he also wrote about strange creatures like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. His skills as an impartial scientist are questionable though. In 1948, he claimed that some three-toed footprints found at Clearwater Beach in Florida were proof of 15-foot-tall penguins, arguing that they were impossible to fake. In 1988, Tony Cingerini revealed that he and his friend, attaching some cast-iron feet to his high-top sneakers, were behind the giant penguin hoax. So maybe Sanderson isn't the most reliable source after all. But there are also some very compelling and wholly natural explanations. Let's look specifically at the Marysburg Vortex. It's entirely possible that ships like the Bavaria and the Picton were done in by a mix of bad luck and bad weather. Unsettled weather is certainly not uncommon on Lake Ontario, and flash storms on the open water can prove dangerous to the most skilled sailor. And even today, with advances in weather forecasting, we get it wrong all the time. Back then, there was no way to predict that a storm was just around the corner. And the weather was just one issue. Historian Mark Seguin said that the area was always known to be dangerous, as the lake bed quickly becomes shallow along the eastern shore. There are also small rocky islands and shoals scattered throughout the area, making sailing a risky venture, especially for larger vessels or those weighed down by heavy cargo. By the mid-20th century, modern weather forecasting and improved shipbuilding alleviated most of the hazards of the Great Lakes shipping, resulting in fewer losses. The last major shipwreck in any of the Great Lakes was that of the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, which sank off the coast of Lake Superior in 1975, with 29 crew members going down with it. It seems the vortex is no match for human progress. And as for lights or images in the sky? In most cases, it's the result of an interesting phenomenon called thermal or temperature inversion. When this happens, a layer of warm air becomes trapped under cold air. This can result in mirages or reflections. So, a light on the ground that is miles away can be reflected in the sky, giving the impression of a flying object. Other parts of the mystery may be solved with a little time. Lake Ontario's freshwater and frigid temperatures help preserve the ships and planes that came to rest there. As divers and researchers continue to explore the area, maybe we'll finally learn the fate of the Bavaria, the Picton, Captain Sidley, and his son. Hmm, can we estimate how many ships and airplanes were lost in the Bermuda Triangle? Have their disappearances resulted from human error or weather phenomena? Let's try to find out. We have a curious story of the SS Cotopaxi. This ship vanished in 1925, traveling from Charleston, South Carolina to Havana, Cuba. 
it never reached its destination. Years later, in the 1980s, a wreck was found 40 miles off St. Augustine, Florida. Since specialists could not precisely determine what and where it came from, they nicknamed it Bear Wreck. It took many additional years of work, done mainly by marine biologists, to identify that this ship was indeed the missing SS Cotopaxi. This was confirmed in January 2020. How did the ship just reappear? And how did it get there, since this mysterious shipwreck isn't even in the Bermuda Triangle? Now, let's see who came up with this term, Bermuda Triangle. Can you actually pinpoint the triangle on a map? No, it's not an officially recognized location either. The Bermuda Triangle does not appear on any world map. Nobody has agreed on its exact boundaries. There were only assumptions with approximations of the entire area, ranging between 500,000 and 1.5 million square miles. By all approximations, the region has a vaguely triangular shape. In 1964, an American author named Vincent Hayes Gaddis first came up with the idea when writing an article for Argosy magazine. He used the Bermuda Triangle to describe a triangular region that has destroyed hundreds of ships and planes without a trace. It is pretty hard to get the number of lost ships and planes because some ships and aircraft have gone missing without leaving a trace. Their wreckage in the region has not been recovered. But the recorded story should help us. Legends about the Bermuda Triangle date back to the 15th century like that of the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus. When sailing through the Atlantic waters, he passed by this location in the late 1400s. In what we now know as the Bermuda Triangle, he saw a huge flame that seemed to just crash into the ocean. Later, he saw an unusual light flashing in the distance at the exact location. Like many other sailors since then, his compass had severe malfunctions. Flight 19, a Navy plane on a routine schedule back in 1945, also started the Bermuda Triangle legend. It was commanded by Lieutenant Charles Taylor, and it's recorded that he just got lost in the triangle for no reason. Since pilots had no GPS back then, they had to trust their compasses and keep track of how long they'd been flying in a specific direction and their speed. Shortly after completing the task, both of the compasses on board stopped working correctly. Records found after the plane's disappearance also indicate that Taylor didn't have a watch on that particular day. The initial report stated that pilot error was to blame for this unfortunate event. However, because people weren't satisfied with this outcome, it was changed to causes or reasons unknown after several reviews. One surviving pilot named Bruce Guerin suggested he went through an electronic fog while passing above the triangle, making him travel through time. In 1970, when this incident happened, he was flying his aircraft when it was surrounded by two huge clouds that formed a whirlpool and spiral. Like many others before him, he noticed that his navigation devices were malfunctioning. When he eventually made it out of those clouds, he discovered that his flight had only taken 35 minutes. It should have taken 75 in total. Since he had no other reasonable explanation for what he went through, he believed he must have been pushed forward in time. It's not only strange-looking clouds that have been seen above the Bermuda Triangle. In 2014, a pilot recalled almost colliding with a flying object that he could not identify whatsoever. Some of these strange encounters were even caught on tape. It's the case of an early 2015 flight whose passengers noticed a curious object just floating over the ocean. The pilots have yet to figure out what they actually saw back there. Okay, not all of the possible explanations have been this unusual. Oceanographers, for example, have also tried to explain why ships disappear around here. So they recently came back to one of their old theories rogue waves. These are immense walls of water that just pop up suddenly. If multiple such waves rise simultaneously, they overlap like a wave sandwich. If one single wave can reach over 30 feet tall and happen simultaneously, it can create a rogue wave that can surpass 100 feet high. These types of waves can quickly overtake even the biggest of ships. 
meteorologists came up with their own explanation too. Hexagonal clouds. These unusual types of clouds can generate winds of up to 170 miles per hour. And they're pretty significant too, some reaching 20 to 55 miles across. As such, waves inside these wind giants can go as high as 45 feet. The Earth's own magnetic force might also have something to do with it. Within the Bermuda Triangle, compasses point to true north, the geographic North Pole, rather than magnetic north, the shifting magnetic North Pole. Some have even explained that since these two perfectly overlap in the Bermuda Triangle, it can cause a magnetic phenomenon that could make navigational devices malfunction. It's called the agonic line. The problem is that scientists have discovered that this line moves each year. It might have passed through the Bermuda Triangle at one point, but it's now through the Gulf of Mexico. Other strange natural phenomenon found along the coast of Norway could help explain why the Bermuda Triangle has claimed so many ships. There are some deep craters there, measuring up to half a mile wide and are 150 feet deep. Scientists believe they were created by methane gas bubbles. This gas seems to be leaking from deposits hidden deep in the seabed. Once the gas reaches a certain quantity, it bursts to the surface and causes eruptions. So, do pilots and ship captains actually avoid this area today? Could this explain why there are fewer ships that get lost there nowadays? But if you've ever flown from Miami to San Juan, Puerto Rico, you probably know that's not true. As for ships, if people would avoid the Bermuda Triangle, nearly all Caribbean vacations would be spoiled. To this day, there are a lot of flights that go over the Bermuda Triangle, so it's clear nobody is avoiding it. This place is one of the most heavily traveled shipping lanes in the world. Nowadays, the Bermuda Triangle has heavy daily traffic, both by sea and air. But the Bermuda Triangle is indeed subject to tropical storms and hurricanes that happen very often. Let's also keep in mind that the Gulf Stream, a strong ocean current that causes sharp changes in local weather, passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Besides, the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, the Milwaukee Depth, is also located in the Bermuda Triangle. The Puerto Rico Trench reaches almost 27,500 feet at the Milwaukee Depth. So, if you think about it, the whole mystery is a perfect combination of human error, bad weather, and a lot of ship traffic. This was confirmed by data provided by the U.S. Coast Guard. If you look at percentages, the number of ships or planes that go missing in the Bermuda Triangle isn't different from anywhere else. Disappearances do not happen more often than in any comparable region of the Atlantic Ocean. Official statistics say around 50 ships and 20 airplanes have vanished while traveling through this region. So that's another reason why the total number is so hard to pinpoint. Nobody could describe its rescue in official records if a boat was reported missing. There were also some events that, it turns out, didn't happen at all, adding to those false reports. Like that of a plane crash back in 1937 off Daytona Beach, Florida that local papers surprisingly revealed nothing about. This infamously loosely designated area between Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Bermudas is any captain's and pilot's nightmare. Many disappeared aircraft, ships, and cruise liners were attributed to this mysterious zone. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle. Ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. Not magnets you put on your fridge to remember that lovely trip to Paris. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. Even magnetic poles move. For example, over the last 30 years, the North Magnetic Pole shifted significantly from Canada to Siberia. Since the magnetic field is constantly moving, 
it might be also taking the Bermuda Triangle with it. Now that people know where the triangle is, it's easy to avoid it. It supposedly moves eastward together with the magnetic poles. But scientists still can't answer where exactly it will lie in a couple of years. Mysterious things don't end here. Calm and stormless Sargasso Sea might be no less dangerous than the Bermuda Triangle, and it comes as no surprise that it actually crosses into it. So what's so dangerous about a sea with calm, crystal-clear waters, no heavy winds or huge waves, no icebergs, you know, the typical culprits when it comes to taking down ships? It's the sea's almost absent winds that make it hard for sailing ships to pass through. Large freighters and barges can cross it pretty easily, but smaller, less powerful ships haven't always been so successful in the area. Plenty have gotten stuck and lost here. The Pacific Ocean mystery area is another sinister triangle. Off the south coast of Japan, not far away from Tokyo, there's a sea where plenty of ships meet their doom, disappearing without a trace in these waters. They call it the Dragon's Triangle. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to explode whenever the temperature reaches more than 64 degrees Fahrenheit. When it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. But the notorious triangles don't end there. There's one in Lake Michigan. Just like its alternative, the Bermuda Triangle, the Michigan Triangle got its shady reputation for some disappearances. The first recorded one dates back to 1679. A large vessel, one of the largest of that time, set out on an expedition. Yet once it got in the sinister triangle, it never came back. An aircraft disappeared in this triangle once. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though. Like, there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where the Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the Sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation, which might lead to serious damage. So no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So, the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. Not only the triangles haunt people across the world, but circles too. In Costa Rica, there's a small island called Isla de Cano, 
where there's an assortment of about 300 circular objects of different sizes. Locals call them las bolas de piedra, which is simply the stone balls in English. These stones have an almost perfectly round shape. Some of them are huge, weighing up to 16 tons each. They're also made of different materials – gabbro, limestone, and sandstone. Local chiefs would often put those balls in line in front of their houses. They must have been really tired of those garden gnomes everyone else has. There's no precise information on their origin. Some myths claim these stones originated from Atlantis. If you ever travel to the Mekong River, you'll probably have a chance of seeing baleful glowing balls rising from the water and beelining up into the air. Locals call these the Naga Fireballs. Sizes vary, so these reddish balls can be as tiny as a spark and as large as a basketball. The number of fireballs per night varies from dozens to thousands. Scientists don't have any solid explanation why it happens, but it's probably flammable gas released by the marshy environment. Most of the Great Lakes are quite mysterious. In Minnesota, on the northern shore of Lake Superior, there's a park with a waterfall split in two. One part of the river continues, the other disappears. Whatever object you throw into the waterfall kettle won't float back up anywhere in sight. They say it's totally unsafe for people because it's nearly impossible to trace the flows. Nah, there's no underworld whatsoever. Everything that falls down the waterfall returns to the lake via an underground river. The trick is that there are powerful currents that can hold various objects underneath before they resurface sometime later. The center of Lake Superior is notorious for shipwrecks. It's also very dangerous because the water there is freezing cold, only 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Deep in the Amazon, there's the four-mile-long Chennai tepinchka River that's boiling non-stop. The name means boiled by the sun. Well, it's not actually boiling, but it can reach a critical 196 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to cook pasta. The lowest temperature in these waters is about 113 degrees. This river still can't be scientifically explained because it requires a volcano to be close for the water to reach such temperature. However, the closest volcano is 435 miles away. So, other explanations suggest a hot spring beneath the Earth that could create this phenomenon. Dangerous waters vary, so Gippsland Lakes, Australia, can glow at night. Bacteria agitate in water when the algae bloom, and their movements give that bioluminescent effect. Red algae bloom's beauty is extremely misleading. Algae types are different, but those that can be found in the red tide contain high levels of ammonia. Those who dare swim in it may get eye irritation and rash. It's better just to enjoy the breathtaking scenery sitting on the beach and do that preferably with your nose pinched. The decaying algae smell, well, let's call it funky.